Welcome to this beautiful jewel box in the sky in New York City. It's a jaw-dropping home on Manhattan's Upper East Side. And then tour a bubblegum pink apartment bursting with dopamine decor. Next, we'll step inside a beautiful apartment with a secret garden, plus a gut-renovated home with Parisian chic decor. It's all on today's episode of Homeworthy. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hello, Homeworthy. Welcome to our apartment on the Upper East Side. I'm Alex. I'm Scott. And this is Cooper. Come on in. Watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Alex Papacristidis, born and raised New Yorker, interior decorator, and my partner, Scott Nelson. Um, this is our apartment, which I've decorated, and it is a labor of love that is layered and collected and personal. And sitting on my lap is Cooper. Scott Nelson, I grew up in Minneapolis. I think. At six years old, I said, someday I'm gonna live in New York. And so I do. Um, I design handbags after doing a multitude of things in the past. We met in a bar in New York. My niece came to town and said, let's go to a gay bar. And we went out and Scott and Tatina, we walked in and Scott and Tatina started a conversation and the rest is history. And that was it. And that was, whew, 21 years 21 ago? 21 years ago. 21 years ago, this year. yeah. So Cooper is our third dog together. No. Like, yeah, Blade. Oh, yeah. Scott came in on the end of Blade, my Bichon Frise, who I love. And then we had a divine Yorkie named Teddy, who lived to 18. And Cooper, yep, he's in heaven now. The prince. <laughs> There's Ted. And as Scott says, that Teddy sent us Cooper. And so here's Cooper, our divine 19 month old Norwich Terrier. Always a different dog, so they're always special and unique. Ted said, if you, anybody's gonna give you the life of Riley, it's those two, so be really nice to them. <laughs> well, you know, I think both Scott and I have a sort of European sensibility, and even though I, I, I am very American and very much a New Yorker, as is Scott, we love that kind of divine, sort of European style of those rooms that just feel magical and layered and personal and collected. And that's what we created here. And again, I have a little bit of a shopping problem. I'm a tiny bit of a shopaholic. So um, it doesn't really stop. That's why we took the apartment across the hall. So like when Scott's mom comes or our girlfriends come from out of town, we have a guest apartment and I get something else to decorate it. And I'm actually working with Boris and Sharon to, who are great architects. Uh, to develop a plan over there, and we're going to renovate it and make it super stylish. And like a little jewel box. Exactly. And it's also Scott's showroom that he'll use for, you know, um, his pop-up little handbag things that he does in the city. You know, I'm, I'm such a pre-war person, but because of being close to my mother and moving into the building, because our, my whole family lives here, it made sense to be here. And, you know, really, you don't realize it, but if you live in the same building as your family, you do just pop up and say hello and give each other a kiss. Or, you know, you have that wonderful moment of running into each other in the elevator. Or, you know, just life is so hectic and busy in New York 
the closer proximity you live to each other, the easier it is to see her. And when my mom was alive, you know, Scott and I would see her every day. And it just meant the world to her in the end of her life that we were so close to her. So that made a lot of sense. And it's great if you run out of sugar. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, it's great if you run out of sugar or something. We can go upstairs to my sister's and just like, you know, go to the refrigerator and borrow something. And then I text her the next day and say, thanks for the ice cream. <laughs> It's like the Ricardos and the Mertzes, but we're family. <laughs> uh, as I said earlier that, you know, I, I sort of, when we moved, I had this whole wish list of all the things I wanted. And one of the things I'd always adored sort of about these divine French interiors was a tented room. And I wanted to create a tented room. So I found this beautiful Oscar de la Renta stripe that sort of tied the whole apartment together. And my upholster, tented the entrance foyer for us. And again, the, we, we moved from our other apartment and we had all these things that I loved and I hate, I'm notoriously known for hating to sell the things that I love. Clients always say, oh my God, that's so wonderful. Is it for sale? I'm like, absolutely not, it's mine and I'm not selling it. So I had this bookcase in our dining room and what, when we bought it, it was between our dining room and our living room and our other apartment. It's actually in my first book, The Elegant Life. And it's a room divider. So when we moved here, I had no idea what to do with it. And I thought to myself, huh, low ceilings. I'll put the bookcase and float it in the entrance hall. And so it's just this wonderful kind of unusual thing of a floating bookcase. And people go crazy over it. It's also wonderful because I then can have this tall lantern hanging at a height that I really wanted it to and the bookcase protects you from bumping into it. Um, the walls are covered with artwork and things that I love. And again, it opens up into all the different rooms in the apartment. This is a wonderful Walton Ford that I bought years ago from Paul Kasman. You know, I love art. Um, Luke Edward Hall that I bought when I was doing a project in Athens. And a wonderful little Elizabeth Payton of Jackie and John John. And it felt very nostalgic to me. This picture sort of reminded me of my mother and I as when I was a child sort of walking on the beach and that wonderful feeling of, of old times. Um, the wonderful paper mache obelisks were from Jane Reitzman's auction. And the bookcase is full of just wonderful books on entertaining hospitality and history. And the pineapples were a gift from my sister from Louis Bofferding's antique store, who he's a great friend. And I love them because a pineapple is the sign of hospitality. So I love the idea of having these wonderful tall pineapples right in our entrance hall. Well, I love animals in my interiors. I love animals in real life. I love animals, period. You know, I'm on the board of a rescue of our Animal Rescue Fund of the Hamptons. So animals are just so important to me. And I use a lot of different types of animals in my decorating. And years ago, I found this, this wonderful little bulldog at John Roselli sitting on a cushion and just fell in love with him. So he's here and in my entrance hall and been here forever. I've had him for probably 30 years. Too many doors makes me crazy. I just don't like too many doors because I feel like it, it, it's just too much. And we already have the hallway to the kitchen, the doorway to the bedrooms, the entrance to the living room, to the powder room hall, and the front door. So I felt like there were a lot of doors in the room. So I love a jib door. And a jib door is a door that sort of disappears into the wall, where the baseboard runs across it. And this door is upholstered. And inside, it's a little bit of a mess. We have a little extra luggage closet where we keep our briefcases, and some more vases, and holiday things. But again, a little bit of a disaster closet. Everybody has them. I like it that um, we really could be anywhere in the world, especially this room. When we have people come in, we give them a big goblet, so we only make them one drink and then they're on their own. They can have as many as they want. Um, yeah, people just feel like, ah, oh, we could be in Paris today. It's, it's, it's uh, great. And of course, all the colors and everything I love. Yeah, Scott loves color. Scott's a color man. The thing that's sort of fun about the apartment is we have friends who come here all the time and they'll walk in or a family member and they'll be like, oh my God, is that new? I'm like, no. That happens to me too. <laughs> it happens to Scott sometimes too. And it's not, and sometimes it is new and I've snuck it in, but there's a good percentage of the time that it's not. But you know, it's just, there's so much to see and there's so many layers of things that 
the whole apartment's kind of a conversation piece. So this is our living room. Um, and to me, the living room is always the heart of the house. It's usually the biggest room. And as I say to my clients, it's called your living room because you're meant to live in it. So we use this room, we love it. We don't spend as much time in the living room as we do in the library because there's no television, but whenever we entertain and whenever we have people, it's totally the room we use. Um, it's a very special room to me because I had always again dreamed of having Chinese wallpaper in my living room, the way um, Jane Reitzman had it in the Palm Beach house, that fabulous house that was torn down. It actually, once I researched it and looked into it, the house was originally Mona von Bismarck's and it had been decorated by Siri Mon and she had put up the incredible 18th century Chinese scenic wallpaper. So I wanted Chinese wallpaper in my living room. People very often put it in their dining rooms, but I felt like it was more interesting in my living room. And you know, of course, when the bill came, I thought to myself, oh my God, you know, my usual thing, what have I done? But then I realized, oh my God, I can't put up art in my living room. So it's actually a great bargain to have Chinese wallpaper in your living room because you really can't hang that much art because the walls are the art. So I commissioned Eve Kaplan to make these wonderful brackets made out of ceramic from Jerry Bland. And I had these beautiful Cloisonne deer that I bought at the Paris flea market. Um, I'm a huge flat fan of Vladimir who makes these incredible porcelain flowers and here he and I work together and I asked him to create an artificial flower. So it's a combination of a garden rose and a gardenia, which was one of my mother's favorite flowers. And so um, we created this very, very special plant. And there's ceramic and tolan. If you're not familiar with Vladimir, he's incredible. I searched high and low for the right coffee table. It made me crazy and I couldn't find the right thing. So I found this faux bois sort of wood painted table in Stanford, Connecticut, and it was just painted white with a glass top. And I said, ha, huh, that has great potential. So I bought it, stripped it, gilded it, and then had my um, workrooms make a wood top and just popped antique mirror into it. So now it feels like this sort of wonderful, glamorous piece where before it felt like something from somebody's porch. Um, the camel tables, a great story. He was one of the first, um, things that I bought when I started collecting, and I fell in love with this table. Um, it was a lot of money for me at the time, and I went and negotiated three times with the gentleman who had a store downtown, and I finally convinced him, they were a pair, and I convinced him to sell me one of them, and I just, I, I love it. Again, back to my love of animals and sort of modern sculptures. The little chair is Lalanne, and um, it's a small little alligator chair. And it was something that was in my Kipps Bay room. So whenever I do a Kipps Bay room, I sort of create these kind of um, interiors as if they were made for a client. And every time I do that, I, I buy one piece of the furniture that I borrow. So I bought this wonderful little Lalan chair. Uh, one of my favorite signature things is Laminock Silk Velvet Tiger and Leopard. And uh, I have a wonderful little chair upholstered in that. I adore little side tables, and we have these made in Paris by Mayer. And one of the new things that I collect is um, I was talking to a great friend who, who, Claire Potter, who makes the most beautiful porcelain, and we were talking about different people who were ceramicists and um, who made porcelain fruits and vegetables, and we were talking about Lady Anne Gordon and how beautiful her things are. And so I've started to collect Lady Anne Gordon um, ceramics and I mix them with objects and boxes and things that I pick up on my travels and fall in love with. Another Vladimir uh, plum tree. Those, so we call those tissue necessaires. And um, I have dear, dear friends, actually, Laura and Harry Slatkin, who own the most beautiful decorative store in New York, which was called Slatkin and Company. And um, we are, are great, great old friends. And when they had the shop, they made these divine tissue necessaires. And then um, I sort of 
they don't have the shop anymore. And it was Harry's brother, who is an incredibly talented decorator and had so many beautiful things made. And now I make them for all my jobs and clients. And this one's very special because it's in that divine Lamanac leopard. Um, I love chairs. And I was told, so I have just, I don't mean, I, don't, I, I forget how many, but what, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11. There are 11 chairs in this room, which is kind of crazy. But um, I love chairs. And I was talking to a great dealer about chairs. And he was saying that somebody who loves chairs loves antiques because the chair is such a great example of all the different styles and periods of furniture. And here is just a wonderful gondola chair that's made out of paper mache with gold and, and mother of pearl inlaid into them. Uh, and I love unusual things. I love French furniture, wonderful little um, beautiful uh, side table. Ormolu 18th century with a porphyry top. And this was one of my favorite things that I bought recently from the Hubert de Givenchy sale. And it's just a divine candlestick. And I just loved it. I'm having a very hard time, believe it or not, finding the right size candle for it. But we've been looking like crazy. Um, I love beautiful candlesticks. They're all over the house as well. I love chinoiserie. Uh, I love cloisonne. I think you need to have two seating areas in a room. And I think it's kind of... It, it, it creates an atmosphere where people can gather and, and go into smaller groups and split up. But I mean, I like one big seating area. So if we're eight or 10 people, you know, if we're having a dinner, we sit here after dinner and chat and have coffee. If we're having people over for cocktails and it's a big group, we sit over here. Um, this is a more intimate area and it's divine because you have the light here. But I always do two seating areas in a living room. I think that it, it it just, it's friendlier and, and it's cozy and people like to sit sometimes in smaller areas. I, I love formal furniture and I love unusual things, but I love a little bit of bamboo or wicker in a room. So this chair is a crazy story. So um, we bought this chair in, in Hudson, New York, and I was with a client and she said to me, oh. we bought the chair for her and she was like, you know what, Alex, I don't know. I don't think I want that chair. I'm never going to use that chair. It's too delicate. I said, okay, no problem. I said, I'll take it. And I kept it. So every time she comes over, she's like, I really should have bought that chair. I'm like, you should have, but I'm happy it didn't because it's mine. And I upholstered it in satin, which I kind of, I love that juxtaposition of bamboo and satin. Uh, these Gerardons are very special to me because they were my mother's. They were from her living room in Southampton. The lamps are mine for Christopher Spitzmiller. And Chris and I are great friends. And my apartment is, Scott's my apartment is full of Spitzmiller lamps. Um, we love them. And I use them all the time on my projects. And Chris custom makes. And he makes two lamps for me. One is this one, which is the Alex lamp. And the other one is the Ophelia lamp, named after my divine sister. You know, the, the cute thing about Scott is that, you know, so when Scott and I first met in the beginning, he was like, oh my God, I don't know how you live with all this stuff. There's so much. So then sort of 10 years into our relationship, maybe 15 years, we go to an El Decor show house that we're invited to downtown. And it's very modern. And we're walking through and thinking, oh my God, Scott's Minimalist. Minimalist. Here. <laughs> so Scott walks in, he's like, I don't understand how people live this way. It's so austere. There's no layering. It's not cozy. I just don't understand it. So I would say Scott's a total convert. A complete 180. <laughs> so now I'm taking you to our like favorite room where we spend so much of our time. I don't want to say favorite. I actually shouldn't say favorite, but the room where we come home and just luxuriate our library. And it's filled with books. Um, again, I'm a super, super bookaholic. I just keep buying books. I can't stop buying books. I love buying books. You know, I don't read them all, but I certainly look at the pictures and I absorb things and I read the sections that are interesting to me. But I, I, I can't say that I've read them cover to cover. But I do sort of fantasize about the day that I retire, which will probably never happen because I don't want to retire, that I will sit around and read all my wonderful books. Um, the sofa is super, super comfortable. It's very deep and luxurious. And Scott lies down and 
plays games on his iPad while we watch TV in here. Um, I sit in this chair and watch TV, and Cooper sits in that tiny little footstool over there, lying down and luxuriates on that little chair right there. You can see the digging marks from where he digs. It, it, it's, it's borderline on being ripped, so we're going to have to reupholster that. Uh, I love miniature furniture because I just, I just love that. So there are miniature furniture all over the house that we use as little step stools for the dogs. Uh, these are a pair of wonderful 18th century chairs that I slip covered, sort of seeing the way Bunny Mellon and Pauline de Rothschild had slip covered French chairs. And, and, and I just love that. I kept the Fortuny and the fabric underneath, but I slip covered them just to have something sort of different. I always believe in having plants and flowers in the house because I think it makes the house feel alive. It's like having pets. It's so important and it really makes a house a home to have living things in it. It just, it feels so much more, it just feels natural and real. And I love the concept of nature coming into the house. I think it makes it just divine and cozy and real. You know, as you can see, so this is something that I do. If you look at the sofa, closely, you'll see how many different fabrics are on the sofa. So this is such a me thing that I do. I take fabrics and I cut and paste them and make them my own. So this fabric actually, it's a wonderful Schumacher fabric, but I cut it up and use it. I took the border off and used it on the cushions. I upholstered the body in a counten and tout velvet. The wonderful trim on the bottom is so much fun. It's a great Clarence House passementry that's on there. And then this is a divine uh, Carolina Irving fabric. And then I've sort of used wonderful fringes and trims from um, Samuel and Sons. And then a, a wonderful velvet welt on the edge of it, sort of to tie it into the body. Again, Christopher Spitzmiller lamps. And I love making custom lampshades. I love unusual lampshades. So what's super fun about these is this, these two lampshades are made out of the same batik tablecloth. So this is the border of the batik tablecloth and that's the center. So they're complementing, but they're not in the same fabric. And again, the bookcases are filled with wonderful little objects and memories. And that wonderful little um, elephant evening bag on the side table was my mother's, the little jeweled bag. And here's my Christopher Spitzmiller gourd that we use as a candy jar. Um, and uh, love, one of my, another, what's the candy? It's all kinds of different gummies and yummy candies. Needs a little refresh. For me, you know, again, it's like when people say, what's your favorite project? What's your favorite thing in your apartment? Everything has a story. It's so hard for me to choose. I do remember, so, you know, when, 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 when COVID happened and we moved to the Hamptons, I always say it was like that scene from Gone with the Wind when Aunt Pity Pat was leaving Atlanta and the house was burning down and she was loading up the carriage with all her favorite things. Mm -hmm. I was doing exactly the same thing because, you know, when COVID happened, we didn't know when we were coming back to New York. So I filled that car up with objects and I guess I just took so many of my favorite things out of the house. You know, my Bucciolati flatware and my collection of Schlumberger and my favorite, you know, little Lalonde pieces and, you know, so many of my favorite objects and things. Salt and pepper shakers that I love from Asprey and, you know. That kind of stems from your mother, too, when she would go to a hotel, like when you went to Greece. And yeah, when we went to Italy, when we went to Venice. You were eight years old and yeah. you came back when you were 10, so right. she would have furniture brought in and, yes. and paintings to a hotel room. Yes, my mother, because we would own. go and stay for a month or two months. We would go for the summer and she would have her things shipped to the hotel so that it felt personal. I mean, I'm from a long line of crazies. <laughs> so now we come to our dining room. And again, I wanted all three rooms to open up onto each other. And we have pocket doors. So if need, if you want to do a dining room reveal, you can. Or after dinner, if you want to clean the dining room, you can close the doors and the dining room can be clean. The table has leaves and it's a wonderful sort of 20th century dining table that I bought at Christie's at auction. And the chairs, we have um, 12 of them, but they're splattered all over the apartment. Uh, the chandelier is toll. The curtains are satin. The floors are stenciled everywhere. I love Cooper. Please don't chew on that wire. Cooper. No wire chewing. 
Cooper loves to chew on a wire, especially a silk cord. Um, this guy's wonderful. He's a great story. So I'd been to Paris and seen these incredible busts that the Rothschilds had made for a party and fell in love with them, but they weren't for sale. They were in somebody's home. So I came back from Paris and I went to Hudson and I found this great bust and I gave it to Creel and Gao and they created um, this beautiful sort of shell grotto and rock coral bust for me that I'd always dreamt of. And it took like a year and we went back for sort of fittings. It was like making an incredible custom made ball gown. And I went back and they'd show me different elements and put it together and, and, and I love it. Um, I love these little French standing lamps from Paris. They're very special. Uh, we have them made for us and they're divine. I love that they're the, the sort of petite and I use them all around the room to light the rooms because I hate dark corners. The walls are upholstered in a wool felt to match the curtains and then uh, I use nail heads sort of in a wonderful pattern to create paneling. We sit in the dining room and eat, but we don't entertain all the time. And I love the idea that the dining room also becomes like a reading room and so that I can sit here and open books and look through them. You know, my books are so important to me and they're my inspiration and, and sort of they're full of the history of decorating and the things that I love. So I'll often just in the afternoon sit and read books and look at them. I always have nine yellow lemons for good luck on my dining room table. Fresh nine yellow lemons. I drive my housekeeper crazy. We're always buying fresh lemons. We have drawers and drawers full of lemons. I, I mean, it's just all I do is refresh my lemons. And, you know, being Greek, I'm very superstitious. So it's very important to me. Luck is very important. These are the wonderful big oversized William Yeo word glasses that we use for cocktails. So we have 36 of these and when we have people for drinks, even for, you know, even for like a buffet dinner, we use these. And they're fabulous because you make one big cocktail and then somebody's set for a while. He likes an Aperol spritz. I like to put a little uh, ice, one of these, those big ice cubes, because I'll show you later the, the big glasses that we serve. And I think that with the champagne, it, it cools it down perfectly and cuts the acidity of it. Sort of our house drink. I guess is they a, call it a piscine. Right, our house drink is a big glass of champagne with ice. To me, it's about, hospitality is about being a relaxed and calm host. I think that you set the tone for the party. And I think there's nothing worse than a nervous host. So you can be as nervous and tweaky and stressed before anybody walks in the door. But the moment the first wa guest walks in the door, all bets are off. You need to enjoy yourself, you need to relax, and you need to be calm and confident. And also, I also believe that you need to have a lot of options for things to people, for drinks. You know, so many people are vegetarian. If you serve a big dinner, you should have some vegetarian options. I never serve, well, I don't like fish, but I never serve fish because I think that fish, it's, it's just too polarizing. Some people don't eat fish. So, you know, when you're planning your menu, I think you have to be thoughtful in terms of what people like and don't like. I don't think you have to be diet conscious. You know, I don't think people go to your house for dinner to eat diet food. So I think it can be rich and yummy and delicious. And, you know, it's about just being gracious, I think, and making your guests feel welcome and comfortable and that nothing's too precious to use or sit on. And if something happens and something spills, clean it up, fix it, you know, don't pay attention to it, don't make a big deal about it. Just be relaxed and gracious. And I think that's the key to successful entertaining. True, we haven't had, remarkably, we haven't had too many disasters happen, like a red wine here and there. Usually we just have people sit at the table with red wine and don't right. serve it in yeah, the Yeah, well, I, I do believe that you don't serve red wine at a cocktail party. You know, you serve champagne and you serve white wine and you serve clear drinks because red wine is a little dangerous. So we wanted our kitchen to be something entirely different. So again, I strapped the entire kitchen with mirror. I worked on the apartment with the architects Fairfax and Salmons who are super talented and we've done many projects together. And we created this wonderful mirrored room where everything is hidden behind the dishwasher, you know. 
is mirrored. The gar pull-out garbage is mirrored. All the drawers are mirrored. Um, the refrigerator's mirrored. We wanted something that felt like a bar and didn't feel so much like a kitchen. Because in New York, we tend to go out to dinner so much. I wanted something that just felt friendly and divine. So it really is like a big bar, but it is our kitchen. It's totally practical and has everything we need in it. So welcome to the primary bedroom. Again, as you can see, full of these Cole Porter bookcases because of my book problem that I'm a bookaholic. I've got so many books, so I had to fill the bedroom with bookcases as well. Um, I always love an interesting bed. So all my beds have kind of wonderful headboards and upholstered box springs. Uh, here we have these wonderful lion paw feet on the bed, again, showing my love of animals. Uh, divine side table on Scott's side of the bed by Tony Victoria over there. Uh, collection of art, Rob Wynn, Elizabeth Payton, Lalonde, just again, you know, and, and, and it's all about sort of the mix of high and low. I bought this wonderful sort of little sculptural painting that's, you know, made out of pieces of wood in Portobello Road. And it was just right after 9-11, so I had a hard time getting it back. I was lucky enough to be online with a flight attendant who actually took the painting onto the plane for me and put it in my overhead, so it was there. So, you know, all of these things, again, have such kind of charming memories. The sunburst mirror over the bed is another signature thing that I do, and that's made for me by Eve Kaplan, Jerry Bland, uh, who I love, and he's such a great antique dealer, and he has Eve who makes these beautiful things. Christopher Spitzmiller lamps. You know, all my little collections of things, a beautiful Vladimir flower, charming painting by a French artist that I bought at auction. Sort of, again, I love the feeling of Orientalism. Us by Rob Wynn, an artist who I love. So I love these. So now we actually started making these. I had the original in the Hamptons and um, it was a Billy Baldwin step stool uh, that had belonged to Cole Porter, the original that I have. And now I've copied it and I do them in leopard and tiger and this wonderful cotton tiger that's very durable. So Cooper can jump up and down on the bed and doesn't hurt his back. The chair is very special to me. And this chair was my mother's. It was from her house, and, and I love her. Uh, you know, my mother was a great inspiration to me, and she really was this incredible anti main figure who inspired me and took me all over the world and exposed me to the wonders of life and beauty and, and, and travel and objects and antiques and fashion. And this was her chair. And then the fabric on the chair was from one of my first projects that I did and the walls were upholstered in Fortuny and when the client redid the apartment and changed it from a formal dining room into a family room we ripped the Fortuny off the walls and I used the Fortuny from their dining room the scraps that were going to be thrown out and I upholstered this chair in it on the Fortuny on the reverse so that chair just has a whole bunch of sentimental memories to me I love rope furniture and here's a gilded footstool that's rope. I love my air tables. So everybody sort of has a different approach to closets. For me personally, I like an open closet. I like to walk in. So I wake up in the morning. I close these two doors. I walk into my dressing room and I go into my bathroom. I shower, get ready, and then I come out into my dressing room and dress and leave for the day. So here is my closet. Um, it's a little jam-packed. You always have to edit to sort of keep the space working. Um, you know, I'm a big blue blazer man, so these are my blazers that I wear during the day. You know, pants, um, shirts, sweaters, drawers of socks and underwear. Uh, this is pretty much over here is evening clothes. Um, I love shoes, so I have tons of shoes. Um, these are these wonderful lob shoes that I have made for myself with rubber soles. Um, you know, loafers are here. Whole little section over here of Belgian loafers that I wear back and forth to the country and sort of use as slippers and wear around. Sportswear. Uh, hats are up there. Over here is shirts and sweaters. And then on the two sides, more space for shoes because that's, you know, my favorite. And then I go into my bathroom. Again, 
covered, covered, covered with artwork. So my bathroom, the walls are covered with artwork because when I moved from my other apartment and, you know, we really couldn't, there just wasn't that much wall space by the time you've used all the bookcases and all the things. And I'd collected all these wonderful drawings and paintings and photographs. So I covered my bathroom walls with art. So again, it's a wonderful sort of memory place for me as I'm getting ready in the morning. I have all the memories of my life and the pieces that I bought from different trips and different places. Okay, so I've told you about my dressing room, and now we're going to go into Scott's dressing room. So Scott's dressing room is a Welcome real room. <laughs> my dressing room. <laughs> Scott's dressing room is a real room. And so I was on a business trip in um, Paris in the early 2000s, and I was not at the Ritz. I was uh, staying at a, at a hotel. And I loved it, though, because it had a four-poster bed, and it was all the same fabric. So that's what I wanted to create here. Um, I said, Alex can have a four-poster bed. He says, no, it, the, the room will not permit that, but you can have a coronet. So, right. so that was sort is. of music to my ears that Scott, right here. when I showed him the scheme, the only comment he had was, well, I love it. It's beautiful, but can I have a four poster? Can I have a canopy on my bed? Were his exact words. And I said, I don't think you can have a canopy, but you can have a coronet. And so we created this divine coronet. Um, and we call this the snoratorium. So we sort of do this for all our clients. It's really nice to have a second bedroom where if somebody can't sleep, can't sleep, has a cold, needs, you know, just. You know, sometimes you're just super tired. You need to sleep in your own room. So it's great. So we both use this. I sometimes sleep here. Scott sometimes sleeps here. Um, and I love the hidden doors because, as you can see, every corner has things in it. Like this is shoes. Over here. Oh, you saw that? Over here is sweaters. Belts. Things like that. Pocket squares. And then other things here. And that's the main closet. Ooh. And Cooper likes it in there, too. <laughs> so that's Scott's main closet. But again, you know, we're also really lucky because we have this amazing apartment across the hall. So Scott's closet gets changed in and out for seasons. So this is winter, and then it gets changed out for summer. Don't close Coopy, it down come on out of there. Here's another one like this. Oh, you can see it from this way. See? Like sportier things. Well, it feels very French, you know, and I think that's sort of, Scott, when he went to Paris, he fell in love with this divine hotel room that was all in a beautiful toil. And everything, the bed, everything. Yeah, and so sort of we love, well, it's very the French. Fabric. It's I the French it. that do it, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's super pretty. This is a beautiful Manuel Canova fabric from Counten and Tout. Tree of Life, no. Well, it has a tree of life element to it. Yes, absolutely. It's not a tree of life, but it has that kind of feeling. Birds and flowers, and it's super pretty. What does the word home mean to each of you? Where your heart is. Yeah, it's <laughs> like home, it is where your heart is, but your heart is so tied in to all the memories and the collections and the personal things that you have in your home. And I think that's what makes our home so special because it's so full of memories, things that were my mother's, things that we bought on trips, things that, you know, we brought back, things that I've collected. Everything has a story. And so it's very special for me because it's, my home is the history of our life. Watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Caitlin, and this is Lou. Welcome to our Upper West Side apartment. Caitlin 
Thaler and I am a content creator in New York City. My day to day is really, I, I do a lot of home content, um, which is why we're here. And I film a lot of my house and I work with brands and um, a lot of times I take pictures and videos for them showcasing their pieces in my home. Um, and I love it. This is Lou Sailor. She's a French bulldog and she is my best friend. And she also fits, um, fits in with the home decor perfectly. The apartment is like around 1,000, 1,100 square feet. Um, it's a two bedroom, one bath. Um, it's a pretty small kitchen and there's no real dining room, but um, you know, I've made this living area kind of the living room, dining room ish area and yeah it's perfect it's just me and my husband and Lou um, and so it's a it's a perfect size for us so my husband and I moved to New York from Raleigh North Carolina um, we grew up in Houston Texas but we've been in Raleigh for the past 10 years um, when the pandemic happened we both ended up working from home and there was just really no reason that we had to stay in Raleigh um, we came to New York for a month like just to kind of try it out and literally by like the night um, our first night in New York we were trying to figure out a way to move here permanently um, and long term and we ended up renting out our house um, in Raleigh and finding a way to make it up here and we actually rented our house in Raleigh furnished so we moved up here with like literally a bed a mattress and a blow-up couch from Amazon um, so everything you know we had to get new and um, start fresh uh, decorating this place so this is our entryway it's you know not a big space but it's it I really wanted to make it um, kind of its own little area, obviously. And I wanted, so this piece of art, I used as like the basis for the whole design in here. And so I used like big bold colors, obviously like blues and greens. Um, and so this piece of art is by my little brother um, who passed away of childhood cancer. And when I was, he was 14, I was 20. Um, and he did it in fifth grade. It's literally just like construction paper and like Elmer's glue and like glitter. Um, but my mom framed it like years ago. And then when we moved here, I kind of like refound it. It wasn't hung up anywhere. And I reframed it and, you know, decorated around it. And it like just makes me really happy. And I absolutely love it. And I get asked online a lot, like, where did I get it? Where did I get it from? And like, who did it? And like, oh my God, like literally a fifth grader did it. Um, so it makes me, you know, smile every time I come in here. And I just love like the story behind it. You know, a lot of the house is like pink and pastels, um, but I really just loved the the like kind of cobalt-y blue in this and the green. Um, and I so I pulled those colors out, and I love this rug. It's a ruggable, so you know, New York shoes uh, get pretty dirty, so I can like easily wash it. Um, and th this was a, a Facebook Marketplace find. This this glass table, um, and then this is kind of like our catch-all and like sunglass wallet area um, and this was the first area that we did molding in um, so could use some touch-ups but that's okay um, and then my plug-in sconces because we don't hardware anything in a, in a rental in New York and I really love the way that this little entryway turned out um, and I almost kind of wish I had more bold colors like this elsewhere in the house but um, that's okay we'll get there eventually. I think the thing I love most about this apartment um, is our view. It's not, you know, a, it's not a Central Park view or anything, but it's very New York view. Um, the buildings are just like cute and I just, I love waking up to it and um, I love it at night. I love seeing the reflection of the lights in my mirrors at night. Um, and so it just makes me really happy and it, you know, just reminds me every day I get to live here. <laughs> So from the entryway, you come into the living room slash dining room area. Um, it's a pretty big room and it gets pretty good light. Um, so this is like our little, you know, dining room here area and my husband travels a lot. So 
we don't eat together a whole lot during the week, but when we do, um, he cooks and we do use this table and eat here. Um, so it's a perfect little spot for just, you know, two people. Uh, so that worked out nicely. Here's the rest of everything. Um, this piece is, is one of my favorite pieces. Um, it's from Scout Design Studio in Dallas. And I absolutely love everything they do. They were like a big inspiration for me. I love the way it's like, if you can tell it's 3D hair. <laughs> The, the butterflies and somebody hand cut all of those, um, which I just think is really cool. So this is not original to the apartment. This is um, a mantle that I bought um, off Facebook Marketplace actually. And actually got it from Josh Young who is an incredible artist and I found his partner I think trying to sell it on Facebook marketplace and I recognized the photos and I was like is this is that of the actual mantle because I know that that's Josh Young's photo and he was like no it's the actual mantle if you google books in mantle like his photos, like the first thing to populate on Google. Um, so I got super lucky with that and I picked it up um, when we were driving from Raleigh to here. I picked it up in DC on the way um, and it fit perfectly. I love it. I tiled the back myself um, and then did the fun colorful books from uh, a thrift store. And this turned out, I, I it took me a while. I actually like just got it to where I wanted it yesterday, <laughs> um, but I'm happy with the way it turned out. So the back is peel and stick tile and I did it on some poster board so it wouldn't rip up the wall when I take it down. Um, and it, it turned out pretty, it look, it makes it, I didn't want it to look super fake. Um, like I, you know, got this off Facebook marketplace and put it here. Uh, so yeah, I think it looks more, you know, like it, it was originally here. So my pill coasters are like, my favorite thing. Um, they're from Etsy and they're real pills and some of them even have glitter in them and I just love them. I also love my popsicles. Um, I always get a lot of questions about those and they're just little acrylic popsicles I love. Okay so this is my gallery wall obviously and it started out as a travel wall of all the places my husband and I have traveled to um, and <laughs> I kind of stopped adding a while ago, so there are some trips that are definitely not on here. But um, like this is Costa Rica, um, Amalfi Coast, Amsterdam. Had a you know shout out to Waterburger because we are Texas natives, um, and yeah, Hawaii, Houston, Jamaica, Asheville. So yeah, I, I love. And then our our frame TV kind of rounds it all out. No, I did not take any of these. These are actually all from Etsy. Um, and that's Miami. Um, this is Paris. Um, so yeah, I, I get them all. I get most of my art from Etsy and frame it myself. These are just like cheap Amazon frames and it just, the matting and everything makes them look more expensive than they are, which I love. So I'm definitely, you know, not the first to do any of these, you know, renter friendly upgrades, but it's, it's actually really easy. The molding, um, is, is, you know, really light and all you have to do is cut it and it's on there with double sided mounting tape. And my husband is thankfully good at math. So he, you know, measured it all out and you know, made all the, the sizing and everything. And then we just did it. Like it took a couple weekends, um, but we knocked it out and we did it in pretty much every room in the apartment. Um, and it looks like I, I, I just wanted it to look original. Um, and I think it does. So I think it just like adds another element to, you know, a plain white wall. Okay, so this is <laughs> our painted mirror. And I promise Raleigh's Boring is not a literal, um, you know, saying it's an ironic saying that Raleigh, we're from Raleigh, so we can use it. And it is um, an ironic saying that Raleigh people say, I think it was like as a joke to keep Charlotte people out or something like that. Um, but it is just kind of like a little ironic saying because Raleigh is not boring, I promise. Um, and this mirror <laughs> cracked. Um, it was, it sat in my car and it cracked in, in heat. And so I was going to toss it and my husband was like, why don't we get an artist to do something on it? And it turned out, you know, really cool. It's one of my favorite things, um, in the house, but you know, if people see it online from Raleigh and without context and they don't know what it is, like they will roast me. So I just like needed to explain, um, that we do not think Raleigh is boring. Raleigh is not boring. We love Raleigh. So this is something, um, 
I was out with my mom and I found it. It's it's a perfume that like I don't think they make it anymore because I do get some questions about where I got it, but it's it was from a vintage shop, um, and it is real perfume. Um, I have smelled it and it, it's not you know my kind of perfume, um, but I think it's like you know pretty old. Um, but I just thought it was cool and the shape of the bottle was was pretty and it and it covers up my crack in the mirror. So now let's go to the kitchen. Okay, so this is our kitchen. Um, it's not, you know, super big, but it's not too tiny as far as New York City kitchens go. Um, I do not spend much time in here, so I just wanted to make it cute, and that was pretty much it. Um, we use this fun wallpaper, and they're New York City coffee cups that you get like at a bodega, and I just loved it. Um, obviously, I'm a pink girly, so I had to do that in here. Um, these cabinets <laughs> were brown and I actually contact papered the cabinets. Um, it comes off easily. My landlord is fine with it. It is not going to rip off anything. So everything was cool, but they are actually this color um, and it just kind of clashed with the wallpaper. So I wanted them white and just to kind of brighten things up in here. Um, and it was a lot of work to contact paper all of these. It took like, I, I think I did the math because each door took like over an hour. Um, and there are like 20 doors, so not to mention the drawers and the every and everything else. It was a big project, but it was totally worth it because it just brightened things up in here a whole lot, and it definitely needed it. Um, I also did peel and stick tile on the floor. Um, the tile was just kind of old beige, you know, yuck, New York City kitchen tile, um, and. I just wanted to, you know, make it fun and I, I loved like the pattern on pattern um, look and, you know, it, it's a lot. My husband is like, it's like an acid trip sometimes in here, but I love it um, and it just is really fun and unique. So I door dash like way too much, um, but my husband does use it um, and I... Oh, I make chicken nuggets in the in the oven sometimes, so I can do that, um, and I can boil water for mac and cheese, but other than that, I door dash if he's not here. Um, but it's perfect for one person cooking, um, and then I come in and clean up, so I do, I do help. So what I really wanted was a blank slate, and that's what this place was. Um, I, you know, like I said, we came here with not much decor wise or furniture wise. Um, so I, you know, really started fresh and I added a lot of renter friendly, um, you know, DIYs. Um, the molding we did, we did some wallpaper, peel and stick wallpaper in the kitchen. I changed all the light fixtures. I changed um, all the faucets, you know, the fixtures in the in the kitchen, like anything that you could possibly do to a rental, I did it um, while being mindful of my landlord and not, you know, making permanent changes. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So this is a two bedroom apartment. Um, I am not going to show you the second bedroom today. It's I like to call it the Amazon warehouse because it is just like where we stuff everything I didn't want you to see today. Um, it is filled with returns and extra furniture and you know anything else you could possibly imagine. But um, we will get there and when we get there I'll show you, but not today. So now we're gonna come into my bedroom. Um, this is one of my favorite rooms. Uh, it's probably my favorite room in the house just because it is so bright. Our rooms, uh, that one, <laughs> the Amazon warehouse and this room are really good sized rooms. Um, I had like, you know, really wanted a king. Um, and so I, I was really lucky that we could fit a king in here and like have plenty of space uh, around it. <laughs> yeah, so this is my, my favorite New Yorker cover that my dad got me for Christmas last year. It's a pissed off Frenchie with, with shoes on what, you know, what more. How more New York can you get? <laughs> so I wanted this space to be a little bit more um, traditional and, and just like super tranquil, relaxing, girly, soft, um, softer than, than the living room. And I stuck with a lot of white. Um, I, not, I really didn't paint much. I, I painted the bathroom, um, but I, I really liked the white backdrop of everything because I do use, you know, a decent amount of color. Um, so... I kept everything white, bedding white, furniture white, um, but it is just, 
I love coming in here at night. Um, it's just like relaxes me. Um, you know, unfortunately, reality of New York City living is the AC unit um, that, you know, we'll just pretend is not there. Um, but yeah, here's where I get ready. I, I love the light in here. Um, for whatever reason, this is the brightest room, even though like the windows are the same in, in every room. Um, this is some art from some local people in North Carolina um, and always love fresh flowers everywhere. Um, my bodega has really good flowers, so I'm lucky that I have that like a step away. Um, my fig does pretty well in here. It like got stage fright and dropped some leaves the past couple days and I have no idea why, so that was a bummer, but um, she's still holding and hanging in there. She doesn't have a name. Um, maybe I should name, maybe that's why, what she's pissed about, I don't know. So these pillows are Laura Park Designs, um, which I think she's out of North Carolina actually, but um, I wanted to keep the bedding really simple. We're not tons of throw pillows kind of people. Um, you know, I just wanted to be able to take a couple pillows off and crawl into bed. So these, you know, are make a big impact without, you know, having to do too much work making the bed and unmaking the bed. Um, and then just, you know, an easy quilt, um, some art. I love this light fixture. Um, it's kind of a dupe of a really expensive one. This one's from Home Depot. Um, but I was really excited to find that and getting it up was a little bit difficult. My super, uh, Called, said some words um, that I don't think I'm allowed to stay here, but uh, but yeah, it was worth it because I do love it. So this is a print from Reagan Corbett out of, um, I think she's in Dallas as well, but I just, I love it so much. It's, um, you know, smoking's not cool, but this picture is a vibe. So my sense of design, I was trying to think about this question yesterday and it's kind of hard to answer. I've changed so much, like I, I've gone through, you know, I think we were all in the boho stage a couple, you know, years, years ago. Um, and then there's the mid-century, you know, I, I have gone through a bunch of different decor styles throughout the years as I'm sure everybody has, but I just lately have just been buying things that make me smile. Like if I see it online and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's cute, it makes me happy. Um, I buy it and it's all kind of just come together nicely, thankfully. Um, I think eclectic might be a word. Um, definitely modern, but also some traditional elements I like. It's girly, as you can see, it's very girly. And luckily my husband is okay with that. Um, it's a lot of pink, I know, and it'd probably be too too much for some husbands, but he's happy with it and, you know, has no complaints about that. Um, but yeah, just happy, I think, is the number one word I would use. It, it just, like, makes me smile and hopefully makes other people smile. So the word home means, like, a safe place for me. I think especially in the city, um, you know, if you're out all day and, like, in the middle of everything, the hustle and bustle of New York. Um, this apartment, as soon as I step in the, in the door, um, I just feel like safe and calm and I love that feeling. Um, sometimes I, I work from home, so sometimes I'm like here all day and I'm like, oh, I just wanna like get the heck out of here. Um, and then as soon as I leave and then come back, I'm like, oh, like just the sigh of relief that I feel um, when I'm inside the apartment and it makes me really happy that I've kind of, it's taken a while, but I, I feel like I'm finally there to where I'm like, feels like home, it's decorated the way I want it to be, and I'm just like overall happy with it. Hi Homeworthy, I'm Bennett. Come on into my New York City apartment. I wanna show you around. watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Bennett Leifer. I'm an interior designer, and we're in my apartment on Gramercy Park. Gramercy Park is this great little area in Manhattan. It's the East 20s. It's the only private park in the city. It's quiet. It's classic. Uh, it's pretty elegant. It's cute. Uh, I've heard people try to come up with comparisons to different cities that Gramercy Park feels like. 
Funny enough, I was walking around the park with a friend last night who had never been there, and he kept saying it felt like London. I agreed with him. If you live on the park, you get a key to it, you get to enjoy it, uh, and you maintain it beautifully. My apartment is a well laid out, uh, one bedroom, one and a half bath, uh, with flexible use in each room. So the living room sort of functions as a sitting room slash dining room slash painting studio. Uh, the foyer has a hidden powder room off of it. So for a pretty tight space, uh, you know, I think it's 1,000, 1,100 square feet, uh, there's a lot of use in this apartment. Welcome to my foyer. Uh, when I moved in, it was in different shape. Part of the renovation was pulling the kitchen wall forward and pulling that wall over a bit to create a powder room that wasn't there. Uh, what I love most about this space is it's a very tight, cozy entry with a bit of formality, which I added through the paneling, and it shows off some of my favorite stuff. So some of my favorite things in this space are this beautiful pendant, uh, which my mother bought me as a housewarming present for my last apartment. I brought it with me. Actually, I have a very generous mom because she bought me this piece of art as well for the last apartment, um, but it's one of my favorites by one of my favorite artists. Uh, I really love this bench, which is actually by Mark Mankowski, the same guy who um, designed and made this beautiful pendant covered in an incredible Dadar fabric, which I was super excited to see pop up in Bridgerton. It made me feel like I made a really elegant choice. Uh, here we have some things from my travels. You know, I love to buy great little antiques, uh, sculptural things while I'm away. This was a cute little marble piece I bought in India. Two of my favorite pieces of art are these portraits of my great grandparents. What's kind of funny about those being my favorites uh, is that I don't like to keep a lot of things. My family is always trying to give me stuff and I say no. Um, but these were uh, portraits that my mother had restored. I don't know a lot more about them than that. Of course, I know who the people are and a bit about their story, but I just think the frames are so beautiful. I think their expressions are so beautiful. And it's one of those uh, sort of objects that just makes you proud to come from where you come from. I like seeing them. I think everything should have a purpose. I'm not a believer in um, arbitrary design. So even my little umbrella stand, I mean, there's one umbrella I got in an event that I think is really beautiful and I had a good time at, and my tennis racket, which I grab twice a week to play tennis. Oh, the umbrella is really pretty. It's a Romo and Temperley collaboration. I don't want to open it, I'm afraid that's bad luck, but you see it's really pretty. Ooh, too much open, too much open. A foyer should be a welcome moment. It should welcome people into your home, but it should also be useful, right? I mean, if I'm gonna break those two ideas down. So when someone comes into this space, they sort of know where to go. They can go forward to the kitchen, they can go left to the living room, they can hang their coat. Uh, and there's some beautiful moments that sort of tell them who I am through my art, my fabric choices, things like that. But it should also be useful. So personally, I don't usually wear shoes at home. So there's a bench where I can take them off. There's a great little storage moment where I can put things like keys, mail, um, whatnot. Uh, there's a mirror where I can check myself on the way out. So it should be both useful and beautiful and set the tone for the apartment. Like a lot of people during the pandemic, I sort of started to look inward about, you know, what hobbies did I have? What were my interests? And I started to try and cultivate ones that maybe had been dormant for a while. And I picked up oil painting uh, as a fairly regular hobby. Um, and it started uh, as an outdoor activity. And when I was designing this apartment, I had uh, designed a really beautiful bar for the living room. And over the course of this, I actually stopped drinking. So I needed to repurpose this beautiful bar because so much work had gone into it. I wasn't gonna lose the bar. Uh, and I personally don't believe anything should be too precious. I think if you have something, you should use it and you should live with it. So that is now a gorgeous little oil painting studio within my living room. Uh, we're not going far. We're gonna see my kitchen, which I left exposed. I think things should just be what they are and a beautiful version of that. So it's a small space. I'm not in there that often. So I just left it open and made it very beautiful. So the kitchen, uh, the space was a little different when I got the apartment. I mentioned before that we had to pull the wall towards the foyer to make it a little bit longer, sort of 
pulled this wall over to make some space for that pretty powder room. Uh, I also changed the windows, uh, added air, uh, dropped the ceilings to add speakers and lights. Uh, but what I really love about this space is the mix of materials. You know, I've heard people make jokes before about how you know, kitchens, you know, white kitchens are boring. And I think things are what you think they are. And I think that white millwork is just beautiful and classic, but I wanted to make this a whole material story with marble, plain millwork, wood floors. And then I had a little fun with it by adding this wallpaper that looks like another material, a hand painted tile. So this is just a light space that brings me a lot of joy, uh, especially with the beautiful hardware. That's one of my favorite things. I think you're learning about me that anything I have is sort of my favorite. Um, so anything I can point to, I will literally designate it as my favorite, but uh, this is my favorite glassware. Uh, it's from Baccarat and they do a couple of lines with colored glass. And I think it's so beautiful to have, you know, these well-made, um, really classic pieces but have a bit of levity to them in this sort of rainbow coloration uh, and i also use this as an opportunity to finally buy my favorite china pattern which i'm terrible at pronouncing words that are not uh, inherently english so i'm not going to say it but hopefully you agree with me this is very beautiful how about a charger so this has always been one of my favorite patterns. Um, I get a little nostalgic for moments I've had in my career and one of the first big design projects I did on my own, this was the China pattern we used for this really incredible apartment in a different color. Uh, I've always sort of had it in the back of my head that it would be my formal dinnerware when I was ready for it. So I chose the color based on obviously the colors I like, uh, but that's how I got to the pattern. And I also find unique uses for things. Um, and it's just how my head works. So I never love leaving um, fruit or bread out. I don't know if it's a smell thing or what, but um, I have this idea to use cake plates as my fruit bowl in my little bread box. So I think that's a fun little moment as well. So I'm an interior designer. I've always intuitively been sort of a project manager designer. I've always loved math and numbers and science. But I've also been really artistic my whole life. So the convergence of the two things, sort of business management, project management, and creating things has always appealed to me. I wanna say I had prior lives, but they all sort of led to this. So I think it's been more of a linear path. Now we're gonna to head to the living room, but on the way, I'll show you the powder room. Which is right here. Typically, that door would be closed and it would look like a hidden panel. So hold on, I'll show you what that looks like. So whereas I think it's nice to see the kitchen when you walk in, I don't know that you necessarily want to have the powder room exposed. So I designed this elevation to just sort of go away. Um, and then when you open it, it's definitely a jewel box. The inspiration for the powder room uh, really sort of came about just through doing research on different materials and it became a story about materiality. Um, I ended up choosing what I thought was the most beautiful stone floor, uh, the most beautiful paint color. And then I found this really cool sink manufacturer that had these like incredibly um, pigmented cement color sinks. I don't know if that sort of flows, but you see where I'm going with that. Uh, so as you open this, it really started with the floor and then I just pulled my favorite color from there into the wall color, uh, the sink color, and luckily had a beautiful piece of art that worked really well. Now let me show you my living room. Uh, I've mentioned this prior, but I think that rooms should have multiple uses uh, based on how you want to live. So when I was laying out this space, one of the first things I did architecturally was move a lot of stuff. So the door to the back part of the apartment used to be where that painting is. I sealed that up and moved it to the center of the room. I thought it really divided the room into different zones. Uh, this wall also pulled forward, which not only created a nice opening from the foyer, but gave me a niche for a bar, which we've talked a little bit about before and I'll tell you more about. But as you come in the room, one of the most important things to me was to actually have a peaceful place to do some work. I don't generally work from home. I'm at the office all the time. 
So if I was going to sit here, I wanted it to be a perfect little moment for me. So just some fun little tricks. Uh, I put an outlet up here so that when I'm charging things, you don't see cords everywhere. Uh, I made the piece of furniture look more like a console than a desk so that it feels kind of nice and formal when I'm entertaining, uh, not necessarily like a home office in the middle of the living room. But I also hung one of my favorite pieces of art uh, right above it. So it's actually the first thing I see when I leave my bedroom. So this is a very special moment for me. One other funny thing, um, you know, I keep saying I'm not so nostalgic about things, but I keep telling these nostalgic stories. Uh, this is one of my favorite fabrics. Uh, it's from Hermes. They used to sell fabric by the yard through different, um, different showrooms and they stopped doing that. So I can't get this fabric anymore. And it was the Roman shade in my old apartment bedroom. It was funny. I wasn't super attached to anything in that apartment, but I made sure that the Roman shade was excluded from the cell uh, so I could use it again. So this is now my desk chair and one of my favorite fabrics. So once you walk past my desk area, you come into the seating area. So this serves a couple of functions, right? It uh, has sort of well-rounded out space where you can pull chairs over from different areas if you want to have a more circular uh, conversation moment. Uh, but I also oriented it not just as a nice view when you walk in the space. I love TV, I'm sorry. So I hung a TV on the wall. Uh, I did it in a way where it wasn't so obvious when you walked in, but also I can sit here, I can lay here. Um, I can also sit in that chair and enjoy the view of the park. So this sort of seemingly obvious layout for a furniture arrangement serves a lot of different purposes. Um, my favorite thing in this space ah, would be this pair of lamps I got at auction. I've always loved these Giacometti forms. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a great pair of these table lamps at auction. So those are two of my newer acquisitions. Uh, and then if you follow me over here, you'll see where I have my dining area. So, you know, I think if I'm going to have a large dinner party, I'm probably not going to do it in this apartment. So I really just wanted it to feel nice for about four people max. Um, I love the material and the forms of these chairs and this table. I think that they have a bit of formality and tradition to them without feeling too fussy. Um, and this little corner is really beautiful. I hung a hand-painted screen that I've had for a while and I wanted to treat it a bit more as artwork uh, in this apartment than I had prior where it was actually treated like a screen on the floor. Uh, and this is my painting bar, which I've mentioned before. So this was a fun little space. So this was created by pulling the wall out for the powder room. And I actually got a lot of excess hidden storage, which I encourage people to try and find when they're doing renovations. It's a great place to put things that you wanna have access to, but don't necessarily wanna see all the time. Uh, and I do these sort of hidden moments all the time. Like all of my little painting materials are hidden in my little tabletop easel, you know, mixed in over here with some other display pieces. But this also just becomes a good little art catch-all for me. Uh, that's a piece that I just bought that I haven't hung yet. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite moments in the apartment. So funny story about this painting. Um, when I take on a hobby, I go all in. So this was um, a Hudson River painting that I had bought and the colors were just feeling a little sad to me one night. There were also some people in the foreground that I couldn't quite identify who they were, or what they were doing. So one night I had the instinct to just sort of Bennett by it. So I painted over what had been there before and just made it a little bit, I would say happier. I think other people would call it moodier, but they're more jewel tone colors. So I did paint this, but over someone else's work. A challenge with pre-war apartments, uh, oftentimes, not always, is a lack of uh, architectural lighting. So what I did throughout the apartment in many spaces was drop the ceiling just a little bit. And I bought these really cool um, sort of two inch deep uh, recess lights. Um, they're from a company called Element. I'm sure a lot of other places make them. But I didn't want to do anything to the ceiling in this space because original to the apartment uh, are these great beams with these sort of uh, plaster curved molding details. So here I added wall lighting. Uh, another part of the story is I have an affinity for two things. I love table lamps and I love uh, occasional chairs and I had too many of both of those. So in this apartment, I made a concerted effort to not have too many lamps. I think you only see two in the whole apartment and the rest is all hardwired lighting. I love 
rugs. I love carpets. Uh, and I'm also pretty loyal to a lot of the vendors I work with. I think that loyalty comes from just believing in them and what they do. So I do a lot of work with Edward Fields Taiping. Uh, most of the rugs in my projects come from there. But when I was sourcing for my own apartment, I had a meeting with Beth, who uh, works with me still. She's not a salesperson anymore, but she still works with me, which I'm grateful for. And we were looking at unique rugs that I had never seen before. And this was an archival Edward Fields um, pattern that they were just reintroducing. I think someone else had revived it. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, that is just the most beautiful thing ever. It looks like a silk field in the wild. Um, and it's a mix of different silk tufts and wool tufts. Uh, it goes from pretty low to pretty high. And I custom colored it to match what I wanted uh, going on in the room color-wise. So talking about you know different uh, tonalities of green, my favorite color, um, for the trim, the bar, the millwork, and the doors, I chose this almost black uh, green from Pharaoh and Ball. These doors I love. Um, I mentioned earlier this passageway used to be over, the layout of this whole space was different. Uh, and I wanted to have a nice double door moment into my bedroom, but let's be honest, this isn't a huge apartment, so they didn't need to be so wide and overwhelm the space. So I sized these with my architect sort of to the minimal width they could be, did a really interesting design on them. Uh, and I think these become almost like a piece of art in the room. They really center the space when you're looking this way, the same way that the artwork does when you're looking in the other direction. And if you'd like to see my bedroom, I'll show you. But I can open both sides just in case you don't have to squeeze. So this room was really fun to design. This is my bedroom. And it was one of the few spaces that I got to just take the outer perimeter of the um, the square footage of what was here and lay it out how I wanted to. Uh, there were a couple of closets before, a smaller bathroom, a vestibule, door in a different spot. So I made this exactly what I wanted it to be and I just sort of went for it. So even with the green color, um, I chose this wall covering that is uh, hand woven silk, a bunch of different colors. And that's why in different lights and in different angles, um, it looks like different colors, but it's actually the same material. Sometimes it has this golden green hue. Sometimes it has this turquoise vibe. Uh, this room makes me really happy. And I thrive off of symmetry and sort of linear perfection. I like that. And when I first got the space, one of the things that I couldn't change was that part of the wall was built out. There was a column that went all the way across and the idea of not really centering my bed drove me nuts uh, or centering it, but then having a mass on one side didn't appeal to me. So what I actually did was uh, uh, symmetrically sort of mirrored the build out that was there to create this bed niche and made a little panel there. Um, and I think it just turned out beautifully. It's actually an idea I'm using uh, in several projects now in different ways. So the idea of having this sort of cozy bed niche that doesn't really recess too far back to feel claustrophobic, I think is very attractive. So a couple of years ago, I got obsessed with these head vases. Um, they're traditionally from Sicily. You'll generally see a male-female pair. Um, you'll see them in lots of different paint tones. Uh, and I started doing more and more research on them and I was in Positano, I think it was like 2018, and I found this amazing store that was a half head vase shop, sort of double height room with just shelves of different styles and half supermarket. Don't ask, but they had the most beautiful things. So I bought these there and had them shipped back. Um, I've used them in a show house. They've been in so many different spots in my apartment. Now when people see them, they say, oh, just like White Lotus, um, which is cute. And I'm glad that people recognize them from there. But yeah, this is um, a really beautiful technique that has been uh, being made in that part of the world for a long time. And they're really fun and special. When you look out my window, you just see greenery, especially from the bedroom. And that was a nice little hidden surprise, actually. So part of what I loved about this apartment were the Gramercy Park views. But when I saw it at first, it was winter. So this tree had no leaves on it and I was just looking straight on the park. And then during the first um, spring I was here, I noticed the leaves coming in and I sort of started to get a little bit tense about the view being covered up. But now it's become this moment that just makes me so happy because I have full privacy. I feel like I'm in a garden somewhere. 
Um, it's just really beautiful. And hearing the wind blow through the leaves, hearing birds in the morning, it's a pretty magical space. When people walk into my apartment, I want them to feel two things. I want them to feel transported into this sort of elegant, beautiful world, but I also want them to feel very welcome and comfortable. Uh, so I want you to come in, kick off your shoes, sit wherever you want, and just feel amazing doing whatever we're doing. It's a great question uh, when people ask what gives a home a soul or what sort of comprises the full picture of a home. And I can't really answer it because I describe my process as this sort of um, intellectual Rubik's cube. I just sort of keep playing with the puzzle and changing different parts of it until it inherently feels right. Um, and I think the big components of it are obviously design, which would be balanced out by color and material and form, but also room use and what you're going to be doing there and sort of how the entire apartment flows, you know, from one space to the next, both visually and from a point of view of living within it. One of the areas of my bedroom suite that I like the most is the closet. Uh, my old apartment had a bunch of little closets, which I organized pretty well. There was a shoe closet, there was a hanging closet, there was a folded closet. But this space, I combined a few different areas to make just one great sort of all-purpose moment. Um, I worked with California closets to sort of design it perfectly for me. Um, I love a well-lit closet, so sort of space for everything. Um, all pretty well organized. This is how I actually live. I know sometimes people ask if I did this for when people are coming over. I don't know, I just like to see things organized. But most important to me was um, housing my shoes. I have a little bit of a shoe thing. So behind this door, you'll see a nice little tower of uh, shoe options. This will take me a minute, but I can get a little bit matchy when I really like something. So I was having a moment, when I was a kid, I loved DuckTales. It was my favorite cartoon. So it started with the shoes. And then I don't even know what you call this, if it's like a scarf or an ascot or a neckerchief. Um, and then, of course, I needed the bag. So now, one off, they're all kind of interesting and they're kind of fun to see together, but I don't know, picture me walking on a plane in this getup. I, I think that's maybe one of the craziest little situations I have. Oh, it's duck towels. It's like Huey, Dewey, and Louie. People ask me to define my style often, and I try to stay away from traditional words. I go more for a feeling. Uh, I want you to feel a certain way when you're in your home, but especially when you're in my home. Uh, so the way I went about designing my apartment was just sort of really feeling it out and thinking about what are my favorite things, what makes me feel comfortable, what makes me feel happy, and how do these things all tie together in a cohesive way. So I think really the answer to how did I go about designing my space was looking inward and thinking about really what I wanted to experience on a daily basis. And the last part of my apartment is the bathroom within my bedroom. Uh, so I wanted to continue the green coloration but not have it feel overwhelming. I love a clean white bathroom. So, Started with this great floor tile from Artistic Tile where you bring in different green tones and different white and gray marble tones. Uh, I carried through with the um, Arabescado stone that I had in the kitchen because I just love it. Uh, with this dark green uh, millwork for my vanity. Um, I like really good lighting. I'm getting a little older. I have to see everything. Um, I hung some art in here that I really loved. I thought it was a nice thing to see when I walked in from the bedroom. And again, going back to this sort of finding a use for everything, if you're gonna have it, uh, I had some really pretty barware. Um, there's this whole San Luis set. I think you noticed maybe some of the glasses as um, paintbrush holders, but this is now my uh, mouthwash decanter because if you have it, you should use it. I'm not gonna demonstrate, but you just... Yeah, I mean, that's one of the benefits of being single. You can use these things however you want, you know? Just me, my mouth, my mouthwash. So like we said before, uh, that I like to think of an apartment as a full story and how rooms interact. I think that something that should be really well thought out is how one room relates to the next. So you'll see the wall covering in this room and then uh, a purposefully picked out trim and door color, which even though this room has its own identity, when you sort of have the doors open from the living room, 
this works really well and just creates a whole new dynamic. So it's a different finish, a different color, but looks inherent to the room. So maybe a little specific for some people, but I think it's a good reason to really think about how one room relates to the next. If I were to define the word home, it's a great question. Um, I would say, I would, maybe I would just use another word. I would call it like a nest, sort of place where you just feel peaceful and safe and um, sort of your personal space that no one else can really hinder. Hi, Homeworthy. My name is Romley Newman and welcome to my New York City apartment. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Romley Newman and we are at my apartment in Brooklyn Heights. So I got very lucky with this apartment. It's kind of like a jewel box. It's like a unicorn apartment. Uh, and basically the building and it's in, the owner bought it in the 60s and he was a carpenter. And so he did all this woodwork behind me and each unit is, there are only four units because it's it's a brownstone, but each unit has amazing woodwork. Um, and I just feel lucky to live here because it feels like an actual home and there's a lot of history and it's not new and shiny, but that's what makes it fun and gives it character. And uh, I love to collect old things. So I think it was a great find because all my things just work inside because everything's all over the place. My apartment's roughly a thousand square feet. Uh, it's really one room, uh, but it's one very large room. So I kind of broke it up into three, four segments. And I have lived here for a year and a half. When I rented this apartment, uh, I knew the best thing to do would be to take all the old furniture that my parents had in their basement and really plop it in as is and work around it. So I actually bought nothing new. Uh, I feel very lucky. My grandmother would kind of go around and source antiques from everywhere. And so I have all her pieces and they're very close to me because I grew up with them. Uh, and you can't look too closely because a lot of them have rips and stains, but I think it adds to the character. And, uh, and yeah, I just think I've, I kind of wanted to find apartment that would work around the furniture I already had. And I just got very lucky because the furniture and the apartment are really in, in symbiosis. Welcome to my home. Uh, I guess the first thing to note is that you walk into quite literally the living room and the bedroom. Um, and I wanted to have these two chairs um, kind of blocking off the living room so that there was like some illusion of a separation but really it's just kind of it's almost like a loft and I just kind of have to go with it try not to fight it at first I was like maybe I'll put a screen door there and then I was like no no look, look, let's just let's just take it for what it is and enhance that I think one of the best things I did here was finding this shelf um, because it added a whole new element of storage usually it's messier and there are hooks here that you can hang things on but i also love the way it looks it looks like it could be from the 60s but it's from hey the design brand and comes in all different colors and it's very functional and so that was that was a good find and this actually is funny this is a um a piece of art from my uncle when he was in art school he is not an artist 
but he did this whole series and I have more in the other room and I love them. <laughs> and, you know, he thinks it's funny that I have them and I hang them up, but I think they're really beautiful and they also work well in the space. So this armoire is basically my biggest secret because if I opened it up, which I'm not gonna do, it is filled to the brim. It looks terrifying inside and it has this underneath part where I can shove other stuff, but um, it's so beautiful, it looks intentional. And you know, getting a huge, you know, I'm lucky to have really tall ceilings, but getting a huge piece like this, that looks like it's just for show, but you can actually hide a ton of stuff in, is very helpful. Um, and this was in my parents' room when I grew up. So I don't know, all these things make me reminisce. <laughs> um, this is very special to me because this is a piece of art I bought from my childhood best friend. She, um, her name's Tria Atkins and she is an incredible artist. And this is the first piece she ever auctioned. And it was a, you know, anonymous auction and I bought it. And now she's going to be a huge, a huge deal. And I have not only my childhood friends work in my home, but also it was a great investment. So the coffee table, I have books that were from my grandmother uh, that, you know, they're all art books and they're truly just so, so beautiful. I don't think I've ever read any of them or even opened them up, especially this with this little parchment coating. I think they're, they're really special and they look like design pieces. And then this is probably one of my biggest inspirations. This is the Dolly cookbook, which kind of informs a lot of the food styling work I do because it's so orchestrated and messy at the same time and just kind of, it's transportive. And I think with my food, I try to create environments and dishes that make people feel like they're in a different place. And my mom bought me this tomato candle uh, for Valentine's Day one year. And I love it because first of all, the vessel, once I burn down the candle, I can keep, but uh, it actually smells delicious. And I was really hesitant at first, but I love it. This is the first thing I ever bought from Curio Shop. And it is a mass striker with these lion's heads. And this is the piece that formed the friendship. And this is the piece that also started my addiction with buying items from her shop. And I love it so much. It's so little, but it makes such a big impact. And it, I always kind of put it in the most important place in my apartment to kind of show it off. And people talk about it. This bowl, I once was, um, upstate with my family and they were driving me insane so I decided to take the car and just drive and of course I ended up at a antique shop in Connecticut and I found this bowl and <laughs> I fell in love with it and it's my pistachio bowl and actually currently it's uh broken but I will figure out a way to fix it but I love the pink marble and it also reminds me that <laughs> you can kind of make something beautiful out of a out of a moment of despair so it has, it has a meaning as well. A great example of old furniture um, is this is completely ruined. And one day it will get it recovered. But, you know, it's it's been this fabric my entire life. And now my dog uh, likes to have her little tantrums on here. But once again, it doesn't really bother me. Um, and just I hope when people come over, they don't look too closely. <laughs> Uh, when I was 13, I got cast to be on the first iteration of Teen and Chop. So it was actually an adult chopped episode, but they had, did like teenage takeover. And that was crazy for me because my brother and I would watch Chopped all the time and we'd pause it every time they got the basket and <laughs> like figure out what we would make with it. And it caused me so much anxiety. This game was kind of the bane of my existence, but I was addicted to it. And so when they asked me, I thought, Holy, like, I don't, know if, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through an entire episode. Luckily, I did not make it through an entire episode. I got chopped in the first round uh, for overcooking my salmon, which I now say with pride, but did hurt a lot at the time. Um, but it was an amazing experience and I would love to go back.
pretty much the thing that first sold me on the apartment were these bookshelves that the owner's father built and they're beautiful pine and it's so funny because like the number one question I get asked is like where did you get your bookshelf I need to find one like it and I'm like I'm so sorry but you can't um but I'm very grateful for it and it's perfect because I can kind of display all my weird little things and it looks intentional <laughs> doesn't look like I'm shoving stuff away so for instance these little stone bunnies were in my room when I was a baby and they kind of they've traveled everywhere with me I'm very sentimental so I kind of bring things from all different stages of my life um, this is a photo of my grandmother who basically bought all this furniture and I kind of like to honor her in that way and if we go over here I have these two plates that were made for the Coalition for the Homeless and they're two of my favorite artists. This is Marilyn Minter and this is Lorna Simpson. And I just love them because it like kind of brings together the food and the design, uh, even though I would never dare to eat on them. Um, my brother bought me this book for Christmas a few years ago and it's pretty much my prized possession because it's not only Paul, uh, signed by Julia Child, but it is signed by her husband, Paul Child, which is kind of crazy. And I'm addicted to candles. This one is from Vampire's Wife, which is pretty much my like biggest inspiration in life because I'm very pale and I kind of have a vampire aesthetic and Susie Cave is pretty much my biggest crush in the entire world. Um, <laughs> my brother, again, he's very good at, he also collects stuff. Um, we're very similar in that sense. But growing up, we would always joke that we were the Royal Tenenbaums because we're all kind of very weird and eccentric and we all started doing our passions at a very young age. So that's me and that's him. But uh, unlike the movie, we do not end up together, which I think is an important clarification. <laughs> um, books, 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 kind of from all stages. And then I love staub pots kind of more than anything and my kitchen is quite small and i was thinking these pots are the perfect color palette and they're so gorgeous that i'm just going to display them on the bookshelf which is probably really weird but i think they look gorgeous and it's like a piece of ceramic it's it's kind of like a decor item um and then I just come in here if I want to use them. So this giant candle, which is, I can't even pick up. Um, my friend Chris Hesney hired me to do my first ever food event, which kind of started this whole new phase of my career. So he had me do this you know, huge holiday table. And uh, I did it as a friend but he paid me in this candle and so not only is this candle stunning and something that I've always wanted but never uh, thought to buy for myself but it also kind of represents this new phase of my passion and career. My first job I dropped out of college and my first job was at Cherry Bomb so I collect every issue. I'm very grateful for Cherry Bomb for uh, kind of humbling me a little bit and teaching me how to work hard because my teen chef days were a breeze compared to working in the actual food world. So I'm grateful for Carrie. I'm grateful for Cherry Bomb. And they're also so colorful and beautiful that I love to collect them. This is a photo of me in hopefully the least self-centered way. This is me when I was like seven and I had the most confidence in the entire world. So whenever I'm self-conscious or feel bad about myself, I just remind myself that this is me. And I just have to kind of put on a good face and go through with things. So yeah, I mean, it's a ridiculous photo. <laughs> when I first moved in, my dad bought me an olive tree, kind of a symbolic welcoming present, but also something that I knew would be visually beautiful. And of course, I um, can't keep plants alive and I absolutely cannot keep a tree alive. So it died, but I thought the pot was nice. And I also kind of wanted to remember at least the sentiment behind it. So it's now become my blanket holder. Um, so I try to reuse things and, you know, some people are like, why do you have an empty uh, flower pot? But I think it's pretty, it's like a little bit of ceramic. 
It's so funny because I always thought I was a minimalist and I'm absolutely not. I like to be an organized maximalist, <laughs> uh, but truthfully, I love stuff. And I think like I had to stop myself from buying any more things. I can't even like, sometimes I want to drive upstate and go antiquing and I stop myself because I have nowhere to put it. And I know I'm at this kind of breaking point where if I buy anything else, it's going to look cluttered. Uh, but I love, I love layering. I love different colors. I love different textures. I love to make something kind of a whole experience rather than one note. I think I kind of like to like balance this line of beauty and comfort. Um, I care a lot about aesthetics. I'm a very aesthetically driven, environmentally focused person, but it needs to feel right. It, so it's not just about the look, it's about the way it feels, it's about the way it smells even, the way like it, you know, it looks, all of it. It's just like, it's it has to be a full rounded experience. Immediately to the left of the front door is my bedroom and it's lofted. Once again, the owner's dad built this entire thing. And when I first moved in, I was like, I don't know what the hell to do with this loft um, because I don't trust myself to sleep on a loft. Uh, I know that if I tried to go down and get a glass of water, or go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I would have a fatal injury. Um, so I decided to put a mattress up there. It never really gets used, but I like to at least pretend it does. Um, it's pretty much for show. But I actually love sleeping under here because it has these low ceilings that are a darker wood and it feels very cozy and it makes it kind of feel like it's its own room because it's a different uh, scale and dimension than, than the other rooms. And this bed, once again, very old. Um, part of it is was chewed off by my uh, childhood dog. Once again, embracing these imperfections and these side tables were also from my grandmother's basement. Um, I like them because they're a little bit of a different style from everything else. And uh, the, the beautiful piece of art above my bed is made by Lorna Simpson, who is, uh, as I said, one of my favorite artists, but also one of my best friend's moms. And she very generously gave that to me. And I hold on to it with everything I have. And I... I've moved across seas with it. It goes in my carry-on bag. If I'm going anywhere, she's coming with me. This was my first foray into candle sconces, candelabras. I found this on Etsy and I was obsessed and I sent it to my mom and she said, you're absolutely ridiculous. And I adore it. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna install actual bedside lamps. So this is my solution, but it's like a piece of jewelry. It, just enhances the space. And I do have this great um, Herman Miller light that works perfectly. And I love how it contrasts the wood, but also it, it goes down and it goes up and it's not obstructive at all, but it does add something. So when I was 11, I was a very, very precocious child. And I think everyone was a little worried about where I was gonna end up because I just had so much personality and so many opinions for such a little body. And I think I always wanted to be forward presenting. I always wanted to tell people about things and, you know, make things for people and interact with people. And I'm very lucky because what felt like torture when I was young was actually kind of my saving grace, which was that my mom wouldn't let me watch the Disney Channel and the Disney Channel and the Food Network were one channel away on Time Order Cable. So I would watch the Food Network as a front, and then when she would leave the room, I'd switch back to the Disney Channel. But quickly, I became so obsessed with the Food Network that it, it took over my entire life. And I would start printing out recipes for my favorite chefs on the network and have my mom take me to the grocery store after school. And it was just kind of this thing where once I fell into it, it was, it consumed my entire life in a very positive way. And I think it was also great because it gave me a creative outlet. I always felt very creative, but I wasn't good at art. I wasn't good at, you know, typical things. So it gave me a source to kind of express myself 
and also it you know I'm super ADHD I'm super all over the place and when I get in the kitchen I just have kind of hyper focus and I feel very at home and it, comfortable and at peace and um, so once that all clicked I was like I'm gonna make a food blog I'm gonna start making YouTube videos and I just kind of went for it and I feel lucky that I started when I did because it was a rarity for kids to be cooking uh, and especially for kids to be posting about cooking it wasn't cool I remember uh, lying to my friends about what TV shows I watched because I was really embarrassed that I watched the Food Network because I thought it was something that like moms and grandmothers did. I didn't think it was cool. Um, but once I started to kind of create an actual brand for myself and turn it into a profession, I was like screaming from the rooftops that I was a chef. <laughs> Okay, let me bring you to the dining room now, which is room number two of this apartment. Luckily, it has these doors, so if I have company over, I do like to close them so people don't look at my bed while they eat. Um, I'm probably the only person who would have turned this into an actual formal dining room because it would be a, pretty much not at the top of anyone else's list. But um, I knew I didn't want it to be a TV room. And... And it's, it's quite grand, so it actually does work perfectly for dinner parties. Um, I have this old table that really isn't functional <laughs> at all. It's oval shaped and it can really only fit four people, five at most, but I love it. And I kind of like the fact that there's this like little decorative table in the middle of the room uh, that's not over the top. Um, and I like to set it, <laughs> I'm always ready for company. Uh, it's set currently with, with beautiful uh, pieces that I've sourced from Curio Shop. These plates we once did an amazing uh, food styling shoot on. I love it because I, um, I have memories with these things as well. This is, I love this because it's new. Uh, it's from Tiffany and their new Homer line is great because it all looks old and it looks hand painted and you would never know it's new but it's good if you, if you want kind of a feeling of the past. I always have flowers. I'm obsessed with flowers. It's flowers and candles. It's probably where all my, all my money goes, um, but it transforms the space. And especially one like this, which is very much all the same color tone as a very distinct palette. Uh, flowers can kind of create an entirely different mood. And then, you know, they only last a week or two and then you, go in a different direction. So I like that. Um, this is very special. This is an 1800s wedding box. Um, it has the original key. It was likely made for a bride to kind of store her, her little garments and linens. And I just think it's so absurdly beautiful. And uh, yeah, it needed its own moment. It has its little vignette candlesticks as well um for my 25th birthday my mom bought me 25 boxes of sear to dawn candles which um was the perfect gift and it shows you how well she knows me and also dark green is my favorite color but i have an unlimited supply of candles which is very very uh useful and it, it i'm actually getting through them pretty quickly <laughs> this Rug is a Moroccan rug. It's made by Benny Rugs, but they produce all their rugs in Morocco. And I like it because it's a different style. It's a little funkier. It's not old, it's new, and uh, it adds a little bit of color, just a little bit. When I moved in, I got really, really excited because I found out this was a fireplace. And I was like, that's the coolest looking fireplace I've ever seen. And oh my God, I can have roaring fires while we eat and I can cook over it. Um, it does not work. But in New York City, you have to pretend. So I have this big basket of firewood. <laughs> and I like to give the illusion that I have fires when no one's here. But I absolutely do not. And I would burn on the place if I did. <laughs> here are more of my uncle's pieces. Um, I don't know. I feel like they look like they're made to be here. And again, I really love them. And this is another one of these hay shelves that I just adore. And here is a, a more modern candelabra, but still, 
you know, in keeping with the whole candle lit feel. Um, this is actually, this was my grandfather's desk that he worked on. And I think it's probably the most beautiful piece of furniture I own. I adore it. It has a secret uh, drawer here. The wood is just like so textured and has all these different dents and like holes. And I just love it. And when I miss my grandfather, it's nice to sit here and feel connected to him. This is another candelabra situation from Curio Shop, which um, was actually used as a light for games in, in France and, you know, I would say the 1800s. But, uh, you know, you put two candles in here, but because of these shades, the light really projects and it's kind of, it's pretty special. Um, this is a portrait of my mom when she was maybe four years old. And a lot of people come in here and tell me it's creepy and I should grow up and get rid of it, but I love it. Um, my mom and I look very similar. We're best friends and I just think it's really sweet, but I also think it's beautiful. So it's, it kind of checks all the boxes for me. So I will not be taking it down no matter what anyone tells me to do. And here I have my little makeshift bar. Uh, this makes a little like I drink a lot. I don't drink all of this all the time, but I love to kind of display the bottles. And this actually is a movie poster from one of the films my dad did that was designed by Andrew Warhol, which is uh, very cool. And I love the way it looks. And also I like that it's a little bit more modern and kind of contrasts everything else. I hate when you go to people's homes and there's no sign of personality. I like tons of books and I like photos and I like, you know, kind of half used, half burnt candles and things that make it feel like someone lived there. I don't think there's anything aspirational about going into a home that feels like it's a showroom. I would say I host less than I would like to um, only because my kitchen is small and it actually is kind of logistically difficult to make a feast in there. So I have intimate dinner parties or I'll have little kind of soirees with, you know, cheese and bread and wine. Uh, but moving forward, I do think eventually I will get a long table and just commit to the bit and have full on extravagant dinner parties because I feel like that's what what I'm good for. And that's probably why my friends are friends with me. And I don't think I'm kind of tapping into that potential yet. Um, and this is a really cool piece. I love it because it's kind of a very old school style vase, but it's actually made from wax. Um, and it's made by Diptyque, which a lot of people don't realize actually makes beautiful homeware. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a coated black wax and it has a little, um, Let's see, let me just hit my head with the flowers. Always graceful, uh, but it has this little like emblem here. I just think it's really special. Um, I've never seen anyone have it before. So I have this bar with spirits and then I have this bar which has all the glassware and it has jiggers and shakers and flasks and pitchers. It's really kind of stocked. Uh, the funny thing is I'm terrible at making cocktails and everyone assumes I'm great and I don't really have the heart to tell them I'm not. So I kind of like try to figure out ways around it or I'll make like, I can make a margarita well. Uh, but people are expecting like rose petal infused gin with, you know, beautiful cordials and fizz and it's not happening. Uh, but I do love barware and I think all these glasses are really beautiful. Um, and I'm assuming that this was intended to be another bookshelf, but the second I saw it, I was like, this is a glassware shrine. This is a citrus juicer that I found in the Paris flea market. And I love it because it's, it's a piece of art. And it's funny because it's such a functional item, which honestly I never use because I find it so pretty, but, um, I like it here because, you know, in my imaginary world, I'm making co cocktails with all kinds of citrus. This is a flask that I found in Scotland. 
Um, once again, have never used it, but it's leather and silver. And the idea is that you take this and you use this as a cup. Um, so I just like these kind of odd special pieces. And these are more of the Tiffany painted glasses, which I truly think are just so beautiful. And um, it's the kind of thing I look for in an antique shop and don't always find. So I think it's kind of special that those are readily accessible. And these are two little, I suppose, gravy boats. They're very small, but they were from my mom's grandmother. And they're a little janky, but they are so special. And I never met her grandmother, but I have those pieces and it makes me feel connected to her. I would say the irony of all of this is I am so passionate about entertaining and I love setting the table and doing florals and kind of creating a whole environment that people can step into and feel transported. But I really truly make the best food ever when I'm all alone and it's 9 p.m. and I just kind of like scrounge through the fridge and find a bunch of random ingredients. Uh, I do get a little scared <laughs> when I cook for friends because I try to think, oh, but would they like that flavor combination? And oh, you know, do they, do they like this herb? And I think I need to get out of my head more because first of all, if you just cook with the things that you are attracted to, a lot of times people will find it delicious if they don't know what's in it. So I sneak anchovies into everything I make and all my friends claim to despise anchovies, but they, they're like, this is so salty and umami and d delicious. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think it really, once again, depends on my mood. You know, sometimes I'll do a big risotto with, you know, like a very simple salad and that's dinner with some crusty bread and some gooey French cheese. And then other times I do a much more intricate dinner where it's like, okay, we have a soup course and then we have a meat course and then there's all these sides and there's a gratin and there's a tart -a -tin. So I think I kind of try to feel out what, what my guests are in the mood for and adapt to that. Let me take you to the room in the house. It's really just a wall, but it's where all the magic happens and it's my kitchen. Uh, I feel very lucky that I have this height in a kitchen this size. Uh, obviously for New York, it's exceptional, but it also lets me uh, kind of collect cookware and cookbooks. As you can see, I'm a bit of a hoarder of cookbooks. These aren't even close to all of them. But I love um, having them here because sometimes when I'm a little stuck for inspiration, I just kind of flip through them. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll go through a few cookbooks and then all of a sudden I have this new zest for life and zest for cooking. Uh, and also I love all the different covers and the, you know, the book binds and I don't know. It's, it's, it's what I'm really, that's where I geek out the most is cookbooks. Um, here I have my pots and pans collection. Uh, they kind of come from all over again. Like these were both my grandmother's copper pans. Um, this is actually a fish pan that Eric Repair gave me very recently, which is uh, such an honor that I feel like I'm never gonna use it because I'm scared that I won't do it justice. And more my, my favorite burgundy staub. Uh, this is a gratin dish. And, and this as well. I would say pretty much this, this uh, copper saute pan, I make every single thing in. If I was moving into a new apartment and it wasn't me, meaning a, a cookware hoarder, I would say you buy one of these and one stock pot and that's all you need. And uh, this pan, it's like one of those things where it has the biggest return on investment. This is so old and it's still in great condition. Uh, I love the patina. Some people are like, why, why don't you polish them? And I'm like, no, because this shows like a lot of good things were cooked in here. Uh, but the way like the way it sears, the way food interacts with it, it just makes everything the best it can be. And it's really all you need. And it happens to be pretty to show off. So if you have a small kitchen like mine, you can leave it on the stove and it's a, it's a bragging part. 
Um, I have kind of an old chopping block collection, uh, which I also love because I use it for food styling. I actually serve things on there and I think it's great. This is an old silver tray from a hotel in France that I picked up in Hudson. And I think it's like, if I really wanna make a show stopping presentation, I put something on there and it automatically looks very fancy and very, very, very indulgent. Um, I always have a bowl of produce that I try my hardest to get through. And here it's a little more fall pumpkin vibes, but usually it's like asparagus and uh, artichokes and persimmon. It's like, it's always overflowing. It doesn't always look as uh, contained as this. This happens to be my favorite of my stab pots. Uh, obviously there's the rooster, which is amazing. Uh, but I like the green and I really like the oval. Um, it's nice for braising. It's beautiful. The thing I love most about these pots is that you can serve them on the table. You don't need to transfer it to a dish. This is a statement piece itself. Um, my janky oven is actually great. I love it. Uh, it's also great for recipe development because <laughs> it's not, it's pretty accurate. It takes, it's time to heat up. It's, you know, it's old. And uh, this is actually a little broiler uh, drawer, which I think is like, <laughs> actually the biggest luxury I have is this like separate broiler drawer. I put most everything in there at the end of, uh, of cooking to give it that beautiful brown color and a little bit of char. I would say pretty much all of my inspiration comes from the past, whether it's my family or it's, you know, the wonders of the Victorian age or, you know, the French Renaissance. I think all of these different time periods really inspire how I move forward now. But I like to take these things and take, you know, these styles and these dishes and make them modern just by kind of toning them back and adding some freshness. I'll, you know, I'll find a recipe for a roast and then I'm like, this needs acid, this needs herbs, this needs brightness. And, but I think, you know, there's so much beauty in the way that people used to do things because they cared so much. It wasn't about, you know, a 15 minute rice bowl. It was about really kind of devoting a whole day to making something very special. And I know that's maybe not the most practical thing, but to me, cooking food slowly and you know preparing your home over the course of a few days, that's the biggest luxury because that's what really makes people feel special. So here I have my um, serving wear collection. Obviously, what you put your food on is almost as important as the food itself because, you know, from Back when I first started food styling, I would kind of pour my heart and soul into a dish and then it would be kind of plated on like a oval, white, shiny plate and it looks bad no matter what. Uh, so I like to collect kind of different types of things. Uh, these plates are from um, a shop called LES Collection and I adore the ruffle uh, <laughs> molding. And I actually love, I wouldn't think that I would love a black plate, but I love how it's just kind of uh, intentionally messy. So I love, love, love these. And then I have the dinner plate version, which are just all white. I like things that are imperfect and that have character. Um, these falconware enamel plates, I think are so chic and they're so utilitarian, you can't break them. Uh, they can withstand all types of heat, but I think they actually look, they look very chic and they kind of transport you to the French countryside, even though it's a UK brand. And then below these, I have this collection of plates that are actually antique Tiffany's. And it was from this collection where each plate is a different spice. So this is the vanilla plate. This is the cinnamon plate. It goes on, but <laughs> I love that they're kind of informative, but also so beautiful. 
And obviously when you think of cinnamon, you don't think of this, this uh, image, but it's, it's kind of great. And it actually says cinnamon loris cinnamonium. And this is uh, vanilla aromatica. So excuse my pronunciation, but these are special and definitely prized. I don't use them as much, I guess, cause I'm scared to, but uh, I should more. And these little plates are from my mom's stepfather. And I think they're so beautiful. Um, just the color, the, the kind of like the subtle cracking in them, obviously the border, they're just really lovely. And they are from Stratfordshire, England. <laughs> um, I don't use them that much again because I'm scared, but it kind of goes against my entire ethos because I'm all about using things no matter how beautiful or precious they are because life is meant to be lived and food is meant to be enjoyed. And if you have something like this, you should use it. I love the fact that my home is full of stories. I love the fact that this actual space is a product of a family <laughs> and, you know, a father who built everything by hand. I love the fact that my landlord who owns the building is so passionate about everything here. It feels very lucky, especially in New York City, to have a place that has so much history and it and it hasn't been touched um but in terms of my additions god i love all my knickknacks <laughs> i love all my stuff i just get really excited about finding weird things that probably people don't think to have in their home i mean i love a candelabra i have candle sconces at night i pretty much light everything by candlelight which is a huge fire hazard but it really it makes me feel very nice. And so weird things like that, I think, make me feel like I live in a special place. This is where I keep all my spices and uh, flowers and pastas and all types of things. My friend went to Switzerland and brought me back a fondue kit. So that's really kind of something that keeps me going. <laughs> and there's even more storage here. Uh, and I love it because no one realizes it has stuff in it. People think it's a shutter, um, but I just load it up. One thing you'll note is that the top shelf has nothing on it. And that's because I'm 5'1". And even when I stand up on the counter, which is indeed how I get everything down and I kind of almost uh, fall and break my neck every time. But uh, that one shelf, even on my tiptoes on the counter, I can't reach and that's okay. And obviously one thing, see, look, this is the, the challenge and I'm wearing high heels. Okay. <laughs> my malt and salt bucket is my favorite accessory. I would carry it down the street as a handbag if I could. Uh, and I can, maybe I should, but I love this because I put malt and salt on everything. I probably use it a little bit too liberally. And this is great because it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's just a giant tub of salt. Uh, but also, I'm very proud to show it off because Malden is a point of pride for me. The word home to me is actually kind of the driving force of everything I do. I think when I was very, my grandmother passed away when I was very young, but going to her, her home growing up, it was the one place where I felt all these big feelings at once but i also felt so at peace and so comforted and that's what really inspired me to go into this field whether it be cooking or design or entertaining i think you know they're they all interact with each other and i think what makes a home is really you know the people in it what you do with it you know creating a space that really feels like a representation of you. I know my grandmother's home was so special to her and her style still to this day. I mean, it was she was so ahead of her time, but also she did things that no one else did. And I would go there and then I would eat food that I had never tried. And I would, you know, watch movies with my brothers on the sofa. It was all of these different memories that came together. So it was beautiful, but it also was really warm and inviting.
Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Michelle. Welcome to my New York City apartment. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Michelle Trin, and we are in my West Village apartment in New York City. This is Augie, short for Augustin. So he's actually my rescue dog that I picked up in 2020 in California because it was really difficult to adopt a dog in New York City. So I brought him back from Cali and he's actually named after the street I used to live in, in Paris. It was Rue des Grands Augustins, so Augustin, Augie. He fits here, not necessarily in my purse, but on a plane as well. <laughs> I found this apartment in 2019, and it was a complete gut job. So I renovated the entire place. I didn't see the vision right away, but my broker really pushed me on it, and I'm so glad that we did it. I renovated it in 2019, moved in it, and then got locked in it for the pandemic. It was livable, let, don't get me wrong, but the kitchen was completely closed off. It actually had a wall there. Um, everything was just a little bit tired, um, so I wanted to freshen everything up, and we just completely re redid the entire thing the floors, all of the molding, uh, increased the bathroom size, redid the kitchen. I just really wanted it to my taste and to live out my vision. So my apartment is on the street level and it is spaced over two floors. The entire square footage is around 700 square feet. So when you come in, you go directly into the kitchen on the first ground and then downstairs is where you find my bedroom and bathroom. Um, so I grew up in California, went to school there, thought I was going to spend my entire life there until I went to college and studied abroad in Florence. And that just opened my eyes to a whole nother world. Uh, after college, I went, moved to New York City and started working for L'Oreal. So I've always been in the beauty industry and now for 15 years at a bunch of different brands. Um, and then I started my own company in 2020 in marketing, branding, and product development. So now I have my consulting company with clients in startups as well as corporate, and I help them make makeup. Welcome into my apartment. You walk straight into everything. So there's the kitchen right away, there's my office, there's storage, there's the living room, there's my piano, and there's the outside street. So you see it all right when you walk in. So let's just start off with my work from home situation. I'm big on Facebook Marketplace, so I actually got this desk that is originally from West Elm on Facebook Marketplace for $100 and then just taxied it back. What I do love about having this space is it's really compact. Um, it isn't impeding on the space really, and I actually was really intentional of having it here because we put an outlet on the floor so that there weren't wires just going around everywhere. I also had gotten this chair that is social viral famous that is a chair and a half because I like to sit cross-legged when I work and no one can see me because the video is just the top half. So I'm obsessed with this chair. And what's really great about sitting at this angle as well is in the background, I have my bookshelf and so that is my Zoom background that's always styled. And what's fantastic is no one can see the mess in the living room or the kitchen. All they see is this little frame in the back. The first thing people always ask about is this skull and crown. They think that it's one piece, it actually is two. The skull I got from a trip to Mexico with my family and the crown I actually made. So I am obsessed with Halloween and host a party every single year. That year, it was themed the Met Gala. So this was my crown for the Met Gala for the theme of heavenly bodies, and I made it myself. So I do DIY sometimes. Um, the rest of this stuff, you know, is Parisian themed. I have books with, with Parisian design. I actually use this book to help me pick out my backsplash when I was stuck on what kind of tiling to get. So I just looked through my resources in my interior design books, and that's how I came up with that. 
I used to live in Florence when I was studying abroad in college and I got to see the David in person and pretty much fell in love with him. So I'm kind of obsessed with the David. You'll see him appear again later on in this video, uh, downstairs in, in my bedroom as well. But when I saw this marble statue of him, I had to have it. Another thing I like to do is have candles everywhere. I'm obsessed with candles and I love sourcing from local vendors and businesses and small businesses. So Maison Cruz is this local business in Long Island City and they are actually a, a queer brand and I love to support that community and their scents are just delicious. So I have a ton of Maison Cruz candles. And then moving down to this area, I like to buy things off of auction. So these books are Antique Collection by Louise Malbach. And I bought it because one of the green color and two, because the subjects of the books actually really resonate with my space. So there's ones on Napoleon and Marie Antoinette. And so it just really meshed with my style and getting antique books is a great way to decorate your space at a low cost. And then what's great for me is when I'm sitting here, I actually get to look at this beautiful art piece on the wall. This piece I sourced from Mexico. Funny story here, I actually saw a very similar piece from this artisan on the citizenry. And the citizenry is very premium. So I actually found the artisans themselves, went to their website, it's Carla Larga, and sourced a piece that is just a little bit different and more unique to my space. And I love it. I love the threading. I love the texture of it. And I love the symmetry of the piece. And it really calms me down while I'm working. I used to live in Paris. And so that really inspired the aesthetic of my apartment. Um, I was in Paris and lived in Saint-Germain-de-Prés in the sixth arrondissement. Um, and so everything from that experience really came over with me when I moved back to New York City. I just really wanted to combine that Parisian charm with New York resourcefulness. So let's enter into the living room, two steps away. Uh, so here, this is my Mario Bellini sofa that is a reproduction. And I really loved the look of this sofa that just juxtaposes against the traditional molding, a really modern type of feel. Um, I love that it's also a sectional and you can move these pieces around and it can actually grow with me. So if I move to a larger space one day, I can add more units, which is really great. And even yesterday, when I put up this tapestry, we had to move the units around to frame the tapestry well. So the Mario Bellini sofa I'm obsessed with, yes, it is comfortable and it's fantastic to even nap on, short ones though. So these pillows are actually from the House of Hackney and they were one pillow altogether. So you'll actually see that the pattern is supposed to match up, but I split it into two because I needed two lumbar pillows that were smaller to fit in this space. And I actually pulled tassels from another pillow to put them together. So you'll see one is actually black and one is teal, but whatever, it makes it a little funky. It's a lot of fun. And I just love that it truly fits into my space now because I split it into two. So then flanking this whole area and the star of this side is my tapestry. And I found this tapestry on first dibs. I really wanted something that was long in length because my sofa is so low to the ground. It seems a little awkward to have something just up on top. And so I wanted something to hang actually past the chair rail molding and tuck behind the sofa. It makes it feel really intentional and really covers this vertical space really well. And the top of the tapestry, we actually worked with Maison by Max, who is local to New York City, and he sourced the hardware for me. Um, and the ends of it really remind me of the fleur-de-lis, which is obviously very French. 
So both of my shelves in my living room were also sourced from Facebook Marketplace. I was carrying this actually from across the street. I looked pretty, pretty silly probably, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So on this side, I have a couple of plants because this is where the light comes in. I also have this miniature um, painting from Peyton Cramp, and I actually have a larger one downstairs, but it's kind of nice to just have a little piece of art on the wall behind your shelves to add that height. Um, and on top here, I have a bunch of little pieces of paper that are framed and it is from an Adele concert where at the end confetti flew everywhere and when I picked it up, it actually was phrases and lyrics from her songs. So I love that so much, I put it into a frame. Recently, I really wanted to start playing piano again as my form of meditation. Uh, again, Facebook Marketplace found this piano and I love that digital pianos are now so wonderful and they feel so realistic. So I sourced this Yamaha digital piano and currently learning a um, piece from Amelie, the movie. And as we move up, this is the most prized possession in my apartment. This is the very first um, piece of art that I've ever commissioned, and it is from Michael Mapes. It's a collection of photographs, and it all compiles to be a picture of Marie Antoinette. So I mentioned that my house housewarming party was Marie Antoinette themed, and this is what I wanted to create out of it uh, to continue that theme. And what's really fantastic about commissioning art is that you can ask the artist to put in images of what you want. So in there, there's a picture of me, my mom, my grandfather, and my grandmother as well. And then all the way at the top here, I source this federal mirror um, that is convex from upstate in Hudson. And, you know, I love to go thrifting and this was something I always wanted to get for my apartment. Found it in a nifty little thrift store and got it for like 35 bucks. So on my coffee table, what I really love about this is that there is a little pocket for uh, my records because I have a record player and I could put my records in here showcasing right now. We have Tupac to represent my West Coast background. <laughs> Um, but always have a candle lit. And what's really fantastic about these flowers, they're actually from ethereal blooms in the UK. They're preserved. These have been alive or look, look like this for six months. And this is my floral hack, is to get preserved arrangements that look like an arrangement. And people always ask me like, how long have you had this? Or do you keep on refreshing your flowers? They're actually preserved and they'll last for a year. I also am obsessed with rechargeable lights. I hate cords. And so getting rechargeable lights like this that can just sit on top of my coffee table and any place that I wanna put it is really fantastic. So on this side, I have this print from Minted that was gifted to me by my friend for my housewarming. It's a photograph of Parisian apartments and she and I used to live in Paris at the same time as expats for L'Oreal. So this was a great reminder of that time as well as my dear friend who gifted it to me. And then over here, we have a custom fabricated marble side table. I actually went to a remnant yard and fabricated two pieces, my kitchen tabletop as well as this side table, just to have things fit into my space and size it exactly at the height and size that I needed for underneath this area. So this is not a working fireplace. It actually was marketed to be on the listing, but when we found out at the end of the day, it wasn't. My architect, uh, J7 Designs, actually came up with a really great solution. Inside, we actually put a bioethanol fireplace insert instead. And so it's ventless and you can have that cozy fireplace vibe without the soot and the wood and all of these other things that you would need for a wood burning fireplace. So I get those cozy vibes without all of the dirt, which is actually better for me. So during the spring and summer months, I actually like to style my fireplace with dried flowers and preserved flowers and real flowers as well, because it just helps to liven up the, this black box in the middle of the room. So right now there's florals in there, but obviously these will get taken out in the fall and winter when I actually get to use the fireplace. 
And the star of the show on this side is my antique mirror. So I found this mirror on Instagram from an account called Euro Mobilier. And they were fantastic. And I spoke to Olivier in French to get it delivered to my friend in France, in Paris, who then helped me get it delivered to here in New York. So we actually shipped this and a couple of other pieces over together. And I'm so happy that I finally got my antique mirror. I'd always wanted one when I was living in Paris. At that time, I couldn't afford it. So I finally was able to get one now. And I'm so happy that I have it. I buy, I do not DIY because I am not skilled in that respect in any which way. And I really prefer to pay professionals who know what they're doing and have tons of experience. So for my apartment specifically, for example, the moldings are really on trend right now. I had an architect who knew um, the proper placement of them in the traditional French style, and they had that done. But in terms of sourcing, I actually source a lot of my things from, from France. Because I do speak French, I have the privilege of being able to communicate with you know, vendors out there and Instagram accounts. So my antique mirror actually came from France. So when you enter the apartment, you're directly into the kitchen. And over on this side, I hang my things up on these hooks to get them out of the way. And then right next to the door, there's a Prince by Josh Young design house. And I really just love the old school style of them with this modern strikeout of the eyes. And in this corner, when we first looked at the apartment, I had no idea that there was this curve in the corner. Um, we actually opened up the closet and my architect saw that there was a curve and he said, hey, let's expose it. And I love that idea because everything is so square in the apartment. It was really nice to have that softness of the curve. And so I styled it here with a House of Hackney lamp um, over a vintage base and have some of my custom matchbooks here. So you can see I customized matchbooks for my apartment that say Shevu. That's actually my decor account on Instagram and TikTok, so Shevu Decor. And on the other side, it says from Michelle with love. So whenever my friends come over to visit, they get a little piece of my apartment to take home with them. And I just really love that little personal touch. So this island is the perfect size for a small New York apartment. I actually got it from Pottery Barn, but it did not come with this marble top. I actually went to Brooklyn and fabricated this piece and had it placed on top of the island just to up level and upcycle the, the entire thing. And I love it. People ask me all the time where I got it from. And I tell them that it actually was a remnant piece that I created. And then again, here in this uh, vintage compote bowl, I have more of my matchbooks so that people can grab them when they are leaving my apartment, as well as some customized napkins. And these I got from foryourparty.com. Super easy to use. And again, my cordless uh, rechargeable lamps. It's really fantastic to just have a little bit of light on the kitchen island. And then here, these are faux flowers. I'm a big fan of faux flowers because I kill most plants. This is my little coffee nook. I am addicted to coffee. And so I had to have a little space for my Nespresso machine um, and all of the things that I need for it. This little piece of artwork that I put up with command strips actually comes from a book. So if you know, there's a book called Paris versus New York, and it just compares all of these aspects of the two cities. And it's just perfect for me and my personality and living in both cities. So here it's comparing, you know, coffees in Paris versus coffees in America. This is also a really um, sentimental piece to me. Um, so this I actually don't make coffee in, but I put my spoons in. But when I was about to move to France, I broke my wrist uh, snowboarding and I went, to, um, I went to physical therapy and I met this woman named Nicolette and she was an older French woman and I told her about going to France and we actually started doing lessons together. Um, the sweetest lady and she bought me this when I finally moved to Paris. 
I came back to New York. I tried to reach out to her. Um, I have lost contact, but Nicolette, if you're watching this, merci. I love to style my kitchen with things that you would find in your living space because it is an open concept and you see directly into the kitchen. So here I have an original painting of a croissant as well as jam in an antique frame and then this little tea set that reminds me of the tea set that my grandmother had when I was growing up. And then here I have another little painting that I put up. Um, again, just like reminded me of the Moulin Rouge in Paris, which is great. And then because I hate the look of a Brita, I actually use this beverage dispenser for my water every single day. And yes, I fill it every single day and I use it every single day. So this fridge is paneled. Um, everything in my kitchen is paneled just again to have that seamless look. It's perfect size for one. Okay, so all of my condiments and whatnot and a lot of takeout because the, th the only thing I can make is reservations. And then on the bottom is the freezer. So again, perfect size for one person and everything that I need. And it just looks seamless in my apartment because it's all paneled. Right next to it actually is an, a paneled dishwasher, which is also fantastic to have in New York City. And then on this side, People love that I have this mini wine fridge. It holds only seven bottles, one for every single day of the week, and it's all that you need for one person, but it's probably the smallest wine fridge that's out there. And to save space, we actually got a combination microwave and oven, so I don't have two different units. They're all combined into one. So I usually lean towards the maximalist, which helps me to stuff my apartment as much as I can. I have also been told that I am the master of measuring. So you will find things that don't go together, but fit perfectly because I'm super meticulous about measuring out my space, making sure that there's room to breathe, but everything fits in right and proportionally so that you'll see throughout my apartment, there's things everywhere in every single corner. I absolutely have to curate my space and there is not exactly a one in one out. I would say two in one out <laughs> and the other probably goes to storage. So I do have a storage unit as well, which helps me to keep what I need out here and then switch say my clothes seasonally. But I really try and be careful to bring things that I love into my apartment because there's just no room. So let's head downstairs, but before we do, I wanted to point out this glass railing. Before, it used to be a wooden banister, but we actually installed the glass so that the light can pass through, as well as it's really modern, again, against all of the traditional molding. So let's head down. Hoggy, come on, let's go. Come here. <laughs> so welcome to the downstairs bedroom area. So my bedroom is on the basement level. So upstairs is the street and then you move one down. It's really cozy down here. There's not a lot of light, which is perfect for me because I sleep like a vampire and the less light, the better. So behind here are actually windows and I keep my curtains closed pretty much the entire time because right outside the window is the building trash and that is not pretty to look at and I just you know keep it closed I like to have it dark down here and it's totally fine there's no issues with smells or rodents or anything like that you know honestly it's sealed off really really well but I love the space down here it pretty much mirrors the footprints and layout of upstairs and it's just a great sanctuary for me at the end of the day so the color schemes down here are a lot more muted and calming and serene because I just wanted a really calm sanctuary to sleep in. Honestly, I there's no screens down here either because I do not watch TV in bed. It's really just for sleeping. Um, and so this is a digital free zone and I want to keep that serene, calm atmosphere like that all, all times down here. 
So this is a piece by Peyton Cramp, a local New York City artist, and it's an abstract of florals. Uh, it was actually commissioned for my apartment and she pulled in the colors of my apartment and integrated them into the painting itself. So you'll see the blue teal of my cabinets. I love just the texture of the oil painting and it reminds me a little bit of foundation and working in the beauty industry like i thought that was a really wonderful nod and on this side we have david so as i mentioned i lived in florence and saw david and i really wanted a big photo or homage to him so i got a poster had it framed and then i was inspired by the josh young prints upstairs and struck out his eyes to just give it a bit more modern effect. So I DIY'd the, the paint. I can only DIY super simple things. And painting is actually one of the things that also calms me. So I don't mind doing that kind of a DIY. So this is a little vignette, a little corner. Um, behind this, there's actually storage underneath the stairs. So there's a door and handle here that will open up. And we integrated that, me and my, my architect uh, with a contractor built this out because New York City, you can never have enough storage. There's actually four suitcases underneath there, which is really fantastic for additional storage. This charcoal image is from a, again, local creator, which his name is Rajiv Surendra. And he's like the Renaissance man. He does everything. He does oil painting. He does watercolor. He sketches. He, he does pottery. So he's really amazing. And I got one of his pieces, which is fantastic. And this is also a very sentimental piece to me. This is a letter um, from my friend who passed in 2021. Um, and we used to write to each other and we called each other every single week. So even when I was living in Paris, he would call me every single Friday and we would call, catch up. Um, but I love this letter that he had sent me. I had found it after his passing because it's very much him and it's his spirit. And he says in there, you know, I kind of want this letter to be kindling for your strength, that you may turn these letters to find warmth and use them to light your way ahead. So these words and his spirit is still with me and I just love having him nearby. So right next to my bedside is this custom lamp made by Maison by Max and it's marble, brass and glass and it actually is a touch lamp which is really easy and great when you're bedside, when you are like searching for a switch in the middle of the night, you can just tap it wherever and it will turn on. So in this corner, we built out this niche and it originally was supposed to be where my bed was, but because I needed additional storage, I moved my bed to this side and added in this buffet. So I'm a proponent of not having furniture where it's supposed to be. Uh, so I really love the look of this dining buffet. And so I use it as my dresser and for storage. And I love it how down here in my bedroom. In this corner, you see I have more of the green theme. So I pulled everything out of my closet um, and in my space that kind of marries those things together. And I have, again, more of those books, the antique books from Louise Mulbach down here to just harmonize it together. In this little corner, there is actually a fashion sketch of me. I am dear friends with the former design director of Marquesa and I wore this dress for a holiday party and he sketched me in it, which is really, really cool. <laughs> I am obsessed with lipstick and everything beauty. So this print is actually from Ada and I got it in London at the Nellie Duff Gallery. Um, what's lovely about it is that on this pedestal, it's called, it says on their weapon of choice. And I find that makeup and beauty is really my weapon of choice. I use it to put on my shield and I feel like I can conquer the world when I put on the right lipstick. So that is very much me and on brand. And my shoes actually are, have lipstick on them too. These are from Prada. So, you know, keep in with the theme, keep in with the theme. <laughs> This is um, a little souvenir that I got from the US Open. My cousins actually got this for me for the year that we went together, so it reminds me of them. But I go every single year and I love watching tennis. I used to play tennis. Um, so this is here to just remind me of that shared pastime. And then this piece of artwork 
is by Andy Blank. It is a local New York artist that has actually really affordable pieces that are limited edition. So this one is out of 100 and it's a singular piece. And there is a laser cut phrase in there that says, who do you think you are? Um, the story behind this, when I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And the story behind this, this was when I was younger, this was probably one of my first encounters of prejudice and racism. Someone was, we were on a family trip and my uncle was in an altercation with a man, uh, a Caucasian man. And we were a whole family together and we saw this happening and I was in the car with my cousins and I told my uncle, open the door, open the door. And I ran out to the man and I said, who the hell do you think you are? And I just started yelling back at him um, and defending my uncle and my family. And it's, that's just for me, like the biggest thing. Do you do not mess with my family? And so when I saw this, I knew I had to have it. Then moving on, this is a fun little moment more lipsticks, shocker. Uh, this is where I take a lot of selfies. It's a great little Saletti mirror that has a bunch of hands holding lipsticks. So it's a fantastic little shot to have and just a little bit of fun. And on this side, I usually do my hair. So I like to have a mirror here to see as well. And then of course we have Marie Antoinette. This actually was a candle um, that got sp spray painted white. I didn't do it. Um, I got it from somebody else who had um, and didn't need it anymore. And I thought that was really cool. And then another fashion sketch on this side. I am also friends with the design director at Pamela Rowland. And this is a feather dress that I wore to the VMAs that Taylor Swift said I looked beautiful in, which was really cool. So as I mentioned, I love Halloween and I love a costume. And so this is my Marie Antoinette wig that I wore for my housewarming party as well as a Bridgerton party because I am a fan. I got this wig and I made this whole nest situation and it was a lot of fun. But this is how this is how hard I go when I dress up for a theme. <laughs> So this hat is actually a hat from Prada. So like I said, I have a Prada obsession, but I, my friend works at Prada and so I get access to their sample sales, which I'm very lucky to do, but it is actually really warm and cozy and it's just huge and it just makes a statement on the street. So you'll always be able to find me in the winter. So this is my little vanity area. I work in beauty and for 15 years, so you can imagine how much product I've collected. So it is filled with products. All of this is filled with makeup, but I really just needed a space to do my makeup in the morning, test out products as well. And so I added all of these little antique mirrors around it just to add in that Parisian vibe as well. And over here, this is my Carrie Bradshaw moment. I have a shoe closet. So you will see all of my little lovelies in here. Yes, Carrie loves Manola Bonics, and I would say that I'm a fan of Prada, and that would be mine. This shoe is actually really cool. Um, when I actually was working at Kiehl's in New York City, I was moving to Paris and the creative team actually tagged up these Converse shoes for me uh, with the Kiehl's theme and the skyline and the brand and whatnot and little messages, which I really loved. And yeah, I've never worn them, but I keep them as my collectible to remind me of that time. It's so hard to pick a favorite pair of shoes. I would probably say that some of my most comfortable shoes are actually this super high um, Louboutin. And it is just like very fierce looking and can really edge up any kind of a simple dress or jean. So this is probably my favorite shoe. Welcome to my dressing area. So this entire space I actually painted in a different color to have more of that rosy glow uh, with the lights on. It is Faro and Ball setting plaster and I love it. 
But the thing that people love in this dressing room are these selfie lights. They are actually integrated into the wall. I had my contractor build these out. There's a service door behind here, but I always knew that I wanted to put a mirror in front of it and then have lights flanking so that I can take pictures with my friends, outfit of the day, and it's just the most beautiful glowing light. So highly recommend if you can install them, I would definitely do it. On this side, I have a commissioned art piece by Camille Hunt that is a body print. So that is actually me. Uh, my body got painted, I laid down on the paper, and then she sketched the outline. And so I had a very Samantha moment, you know, when she took pictures of herself, I felt like this is me commemorating where I am right now in my life, feeling very secure about myself. And so that's when I had this made. And of course I work in beauty and so my perfume collection is massive, again, collected over 15 years. So when people come over, they can take their pick of what they wanna wear. Welcome to my tiny but mighty bathroom. It is covered in this floral wallpaper from Ellie Cashman. I really wanted to treat my bathroom like it's a powder room. New York City bathrooms are super small, and so I might as well go all out. So we actually were able to double the space of the bathroom. There used to be a tub right here and a tiny little sink, but because I'm on the basement floor, I was able to expand the water footprint, which is great. So I added in a standing shower, and because I don't use a tub and I don't need it, and that was wonderful for me. And then over here, is the ultimate flex in New York City, a washer dryer. Home means it's where you can be your most authentic self. It's where you ugly cry, it's where you scream, it's where you laugh until you snort. It's just where you can be your most true and authentic self. And when you invite people into your home, you're showing who you are. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.